what is going on everybody and welcome back to today's stream we are back again talking marvel comic-con 2022 the panel was um pretty interesting to say the least and we are breaking it all down we're recapping it live so excited to be here with you all before we get into the stream thumbs up share comment and we're gonna get into it very excited to be here let me go ahead and reveal i'm here what's up everybody what is going on again man we've been streaming a lot lately we have been um what this is day two of our comic-con 2022 coverage we, we we covered the dc panel uh we covered marvel last night such a fun time some highs some interesting moments that we were i was in my raw emotion of feelings seeing it everything live those were my live reactions to all the announcements now i had some time to think about it process it all sleep over it you know i'm talking black panther obviously and just my thoughts on that we'll talk about that in today's stream obviously the slew of just phase four ending with black panther phase five starting with uh ant-man phase six ending with avengers secret wars there is so much to go over today and i'm so excited to be here again thank you all for tuning in on this sunday hope you're having a great day so far hope you all are staying hydrated staying cool staying air conditioned and having a good time um and then you know talking marvel that's what we're doing today and i'm just so excited to be here but before we get into the discussion do me a favor there's a little thumbs up. Hit that thumbs up for me. It means a lot, but also it spreads out the algorithm. We can get more people into the conversation, different opinions, different uh, thoughts on everything, uh, as well as share it, man. Listen, if you have a social media account that you use and, and you speak upon these certain subjects that we're talking about today, which is obviously Marvel, share it to your Instagrams, your, your Twitters, your whatever the case may be, and tag me for I can go ahead and share it as well. Um, and then also, this is live. We are live today. So throw in your comments. It's just me. So I'm going to try to get to, I'm going to be on my little soapbox every now and then, but I'm going to try to get to all of your comments as often as I can, uh, you know, respond to the comments, questions, concerns, uh, you know, things that you all have on your mind. So I'm going to do my best to do so, you know, it's not needed, but if you guys want to get a question answered as quickly as possible, you know, we do have super chats open. Uh, if you guys want to uh, be able to get your question answered ASAP. So with that being said, and also shout out to the replay gang for those that weren't able to tune in live and watching this you know, later today, tomorrow, hell, next year, we appreciate you. So listen, we are here discussing it. As you can see from the title, this is a recap breakdown discussion of all the stuff that Marvel gave us yesterday. And it's so funny, right? Because after yesterday's panel of DC, and if you all saw that stream, if you haven't, you can watch the replay. I was like, man, I really feel like, okay, DC kind of was like, we're going to give you everything we have to the immediately, right? We got Black Adam, we got, you know, um, Shazam. That's what's coming out this year. We're going to give it to y'all. And we might leave some of the bigger surprises towards their DC fandom, which it hasn't been announced that they're doing that again, but I'm, I'm pretty sure they will do it this year. So then I start to go in my mind, I'm like, damn, maybe Marvel's going to do the same thing. They're going to be like, we're going to be here today to present to you she hulk which they did and black panther because those are the two products that are coming out by the end of this year and they did that plus some right because <laughs> i'm thinking man time is running up we ain't heard about black panther yet but by the end of the panel which was like an hour and a half well over the time which i was happy about they gave us more than just you know the immediate future they gave us all this stuff all the phase five they gave us this thing here we're gonna talk about kane dynasty they gave us this thing here we're gonna talk about that and also marvel's first family so it was an event to say the least and then also obviously like i said we will be talking about it because it is the you know it's in the thumbnail it's on my mind it's on you guys's mind we're gonna talk black panther we're gonna talk about that trailer um what what all it had to offer um the highs the lows and everything in between we're gonna have that discussion so um let's just get into it but before we do so let me say what's up to everyone that's joining me live which again i can't thank you all enough for taking the time to be here and uh talk about some marvel uh sweet november actually catching a live yeah it was shout out to you thank you for being here hope you're having a good time hope you're sitting back chilling couch bed wherever you are at work whatever i appreciate you being here and i'm glad you're able to catch it live uh az gaming what's going on to you uh how we doing how we doing uh real how we doing today happy sunday to you um let's see let's see we got coop the bully in the building yeah interesting and intriguing work yeah interesting is the word that i can that i can think of uh coop the bully but i appreciate you being here man we're gonna have some good discussions today uh we got moonlight 
in the building. How we doing? Um, sorry, DC folks. <laughs> Listen, and as I said in my my uh, live stream yesterday, and I will continue to say this, I am a DC fan at heart. I love Marvel, but I grew up on DC, so I still have hope. I still have hope. And and to be fair, real DC, if we're being honest, if we're if we're going bar for bar, you know, DC has been slaying Marvel. If we're comparing phase four versus this kind of whatever phase we want to call DC right now with, you know, the Suicide Squad, Peacemaker, the Batman. I mean, we've been on we've been fire right now. So, hey, DC, we're behind a ball, but we we making strides. We're making strides. But shout out to real. Uh, agree with the real review. <laughs> what up, Vaughn? What's going on? What's yo, yo, yo? Can we discuss the baby? I think. Yeah, we will get into the baby because I was kind of confused when I saw the trailer yesterday. I'm like, is that? The child is baby, but a lot of you always like, no, that's probably you know, he's being born in the water, it's probably Namor, or it might be his child, uh, daughter or son, or whatever. So, we'll get into that when we get into um, you know, the Black, Pan Black Panther Wakanda trailer breakdown. And again, the way I want to kind of handle this is we're gonna go, we're gonna talk about all the projects, but I'm gonna really kind of shine a lot on the ones that I'm more excited for, and obviously the ones you all are excited for, and then we're gonna pivot, we're gonna probably end the stream with the Black Panther discussion um, and the trailer and all that stuff. So I'm going to leave time codes too at the end of this video. So by the time this stream is done, I'm going to have uh, time codes and everything. So for those that are watching the replay, you kind of know what what topics we talk tackled in today's breakdown. Um, got it, friend. Just hope we get a rebound. Hey, Wonder Woman 84 was, was rough, but she's still my homie. I'm still a Gal Gadot, Wonder Woman fan, you know, so... Yeah, DC. We, we, we're talking Marvel today. We're talking Marvel today. But with all that being said, listen here. Goddamn. Phase five, phase six announcements. And then Kevin Feige came out on stage and says, you know, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever will be the end of phase four, which is very interesting because, again, we know from the last Comic-Con, we know from D23 that phase four looked like it was never ending story, right? It was all the different products that we'll see talk about here was supposed to be the part of phase four. So I wonder if you all remember, there was an article a couple weeks ago, or maybe a couple months ago at this point, that came out and said that Kevin Feige was going to go to a, a retreat with him and his, you know, uh, creative minds. And they were going to map out the next, I think they said three to five years. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. We know they like to plan ahead. And, and I, I would assume that based on that meeting that they decided, okay, we, we're going to cap off phase four here and we're going to launch phase five and six in the next three years, which is very interesting considering that all these phases have been around, you know, two, three plus years in some cases. So very quick. Very quick, which we'll talk about that a little bit later. But let's go. Let's talk about it. Let's go ahead and pull up this uh, this slate here. This incredible, ambitious, questionable slate for some projects. Um, and while we do that, again, let me know in the live chat and, of course, in the replay. I did a, a little short video again, um, just a little quick plug right quick. Something that I'm doing, um, experimenting with on the channel that I've been doing for the last month is doing these short form contents in the form of YouTube shorts. Um, and right now, just uh, I'm a you know somewhat of a tech head, and I like to stick with the trends and see what's going on. Because like I said a couple weeks ago, or actually a couple years ago, I want to make this a full time opportunity for me to be here with you all on a regular basis, talking movie news, TV news, this, that, and the other. So I'm looking at my YouTube channel as a growing community, but also as a, as a business to potentially make this a full-time uh, opportunity. So I'm looking at all the different trends and shorts have been something I've really been taking advantage of. But with all that being said, I have a short on the YouTube channel now in regards to how I rank these projects from like my excitement level. So with that being said, pulling that list back up, let's take a look at phase five. Now, obviously, the big thing about Phase 5 is the announcement that this individual and his crew and his family will be launching Phase 5, which, if we look at how Phase 6 is shaping up with the Kang Dynasty, that makes a lot of sense because, obviously, Kang is the big bad moving forward as far as at least this, uh, as they refer to as, let me see if I have a picture of it, the Multiverse Saga. 
So with that being said, we're opening out of the gates with this film. Now, I'm going to be 100% honest with you all. If you have been watching the channel for the last few years, and particularly when we started the WandaVision uh, live discussions for all the after shows for those Marvel Disney Plus shows, there have been many conversations about my feelings on the Ant-Man franchise. Now, I'm a fan of the first Ant-Man, nice heist film, family film, a man, you know, trying to be the hero, not for the world per se, but for his daughter. So it's a nice grounded story with the implications of a greater connection to the MCU with the quantum realm. Transition into uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp. I've only, and I see, I've watched Marvel films multiple times. Like, I'm a, I'm a Marvel fan. I've only seen that film two times. Once in a theater, and I have it on Blu-ray back when I was a big collector. Um, so I've only seen it twice. It's not a terrible film. It's just not memorable, for me at least. Um, honestly, I don't even remember. I'm, it was the ghost, and she was like phasing into different multiverses. And you had the, the dude Sonny trying to get the quantum technology, which we really don't know who Sonny works for. Does he work for Kang? Does he work for Doom? You know, setting it up for seven, eight, nine phases. But... It's just a film that just didn't really impact me in that way. Not that every film has to be so impactful within the MCU, but it just isn't memorable for me. So I'm saying all that to say when it comes to Ant-Man 3, he's getting this trilogy, which going back to DC, the fact that Ant-Man has a trilogy of films and Superman only has one film in the last 10 years. Just think about that for a second. Anyway. Ant-Man's third film, I'm like, I'm really indifferent about the franchise. I like Paul Rudd. I, I like the family element. Michelle Pfeiffer now in the mix. It's cool, right? And, and you know, get big, get small, Quantum Realm. It's a cool franchise, but it's kind of like least prioritizing things. It's like, the thing, I don't really care about Ant-Man. We go to Loki. We meet Kang. Well, even before we met him in Loki, they had already announced in D23, what, 2019 or 2020, that Kang will be a part of Ant-Man. So I'm like, woo, radar's up. For many reasons. One being, okay, I'm a little bit more excited for this, but then I'm like thinking in my head, from the the little bit of knowledge, you know, I'm not the biggest Kane, I'm not a expert in the Kane lore or whatnot, but for what I, from what I know about Kane, from seeing different, you know, reading different comics, not necessarily his comics, but seeing him being involved in the story and things of that nature, <laughs> Kane ain't no one to mess with. And based on the first two Ant Mans. How is Ant Man and his crew gonna handle Kang? That so that was when I'm like, I, I don't know if, if I'm excited about this. Is it a, is it a, you know, is it saying something about Kang that he's gonna be like nerfed? Is he gonna be you know less less of because he has to kind of fit within the the Ant Man world, or is it saying that Ant Man is gonna get a boost? They're going to make Ant-Man maybe a little bit more OP, you know, have a little bit more skill sets, or they're going to bring more people into his franchise to really boost the idea that Ant-Man and this whole idea of the family can go against Kang. Um, so with all that being said, as far as anticipation, excitement for this project, which is Ant-Man and the Wasp and the, the Quantumanium, the thing that's really making me excited could be the word is Kang. I'm really number one. Jonathan Goddamn Majors is a is a is a is a force to reckon with in the, in the landscape of Hollywood in, in like a five year window from Last Black Man in, in, in San Francisco to seeing him transition over to Lovecraft Country, you know, doing the Spike Lee film, The Five Bloods, um, and so on and so forth, and just little projects here and there. He has blown up to be a part of the Creed franchise later this year. Obviously now. We'll get into his whole, the Kang dynasty. This is just awesome to see Jonathan Majors on this scale, to see him becoming a household name. It puts a smile on my face, right? So I'm I'm 100% behind that and supporting Jonathan Majors and, and him getting himself fully integrated, integrated in the MCU because obviously we got him in Loki and, and the one who remains that, um, like that, <laughs> that was just a taste of what we're going to get from the very different versions of the character. So, I'm liking Kang. I'm looking forward to it. Peyton Reed, he has he has grown on me from, you know, not just the Ant-Man franchise, but really appreciating his skill set behind the camera when given more serious material. Obviously, he walked into the situation of the first Ant-Man. Obviously, it was an Edgar Wright film. He came in, had to put his little, you know, his, his sensibilities on it, but it really, it wasn't his film. Ant-Man the Wasp, I think, was more of a less a 
studio film in a certain extent. Like they had to push a certain narrative in regards to the quantum realm, setting up the Avengers in game and really not putting his, there are Peyton Reed isms in, in Ant-Man and the Wasp, but I don't really think he was fully able to show what he's capable of. And I say that because listen, man, Peyton Reed has done some incredible stuff on, in the Star Wars universe. And obviously, it's a TV show, a little bit different, you know, IP, obviously. But I'm, I'm referring to his directing sensibilities. And when called upon to hit on those beats, he has some of the best, if not the best, Mandalorian episode. Spoiler alert, the finale of season two. Spoiler alert, Luke Skywalker. And that whole, the drama, the tension, the spectacle, it was a great episode of TV. So I know Peyton Reed can do good thing. So I'm hoping that this is more of a Peyton Reed's film. He can implement himself into this movie and really give us these emotions. Cause from what I heard about, um, what they said about the, they didn't obviously the, the trailer or the, the, the footage they showed last night wasn't revealed to the public, but I did some, some research and some digging. Let me see if I have it in my DMS in regards to what they show, but if I can't find it, I thought I sent it to myself, but no, neither here nor there. Essentially, here we go. Yeah, let me pull it up here. Let me share the screen with y'all right quick. And we're going to look at the footage they showed yesterday, which I wish I wish they would have showed. But again, understanding that this is kind of, this is why you go to Comic-Con. This is why you buy a ticket to get the exclusivity. So I get all that. So let me pull this up for y'all and let you know what, what they showed the, the folks at Comic-Con last night. Ignore the, uh, the ads. Um, so let's scroll down. All right. So essentially with the footage, basically, this is put it in a, in, a, in, a, um, in a nutshell, as you all can see. And let me know again, again, for everyone watching live, we got 58 people joining the chat. Uh, thank you all for joining me on this Sunday. If you haven't already liked the video, share the video. This is a live community. This is a live chat. So definitely drop your comments. I'm going to get to these comments here in a bit. I, I'm definitely not ignoring you all. We will get to you here in a second. Um, but uh, thank you again for joining. Let's get into the topic here. So. Again, the footage reads, in the new footage, we see Scott Lang reading from his new book, Look Out for the Little Guy, which is kind of funny because, you know, little guy, big guy, all that fun stuff there. <laughs> and it says that it's clear that Scott hasn't been in any action for a while um, and calls himself a person from prison, uh, which he has his daughter. Okay, hold on. Before he gets in a call from prison, which is from his daughter daughter so casey cassie lang is in custody so the, the the what they say the apple doesn't far doesn't fall too far from the tree so it looks like she's taking on some um criminal activities okay very different very interesting very different from the little girl we saw from that man one and that man two but it says here scott wants to help her out uh, she doesn't. He doesn't want her to waste her life. He talks about how he saved the world and Michael Douglas calling Scott uh, out on his uh, on. I guess it's not being a hero that he's supposed to be. Michelle Pfeiffer, Vanessa and Lily also get on. So it seems like Scott is is very much in his head, right? He's living in fifteen minutes of fame. He's like, listen, bro, I'm an Avenger. I, I saved the world, man. <laughs> a very different switch in the character because I've never. I never would have taken Scott as someone that wants credit for things. Uh, so a different switch in the character switches again, switching things up. Uh, I like that. I like that. So it says, then it cuts to Kane talking to Scott. You're an, I can't do a Jonathan majors. And plus, I don't know if he's going to put like on a, a menacing voice or whatever, but as you all can see, he says to Scott, you're an interesting man, Scott, and points out how many years Scott missed trapped in the quantum realm. <clears throat> He what now I'm confused. He said the years he missed in the quantum realm in in Endgame, he said he was only in there for five years. So, well, I guess he's saying, I guess in the in the in the five years that he was gone. Okay, maybe that's where you okay. Let's get back to it. Um, you've lost a lot of time, but time, it isn't what you think. It's not a straight line. We see some explosions and them getting sucked into the quantum realm, which I do remember Scott, uh, or Scott, Paul Rudd saying on stage last night that this film, majority of the film will be in the quantum realm, which is pretty cool. I like that idea. They end up in another world. They're navigating. Uh, Bill Murray pops up, which is cool. It's going to be interesting to see him in the mix. Everything you're holding on to, and I think this is Kane talking to him again. Everything you're have, holding on to, everything you call life, I know it ends. I know how it ends, Kane says. Scott tells him, you've made a mistake because I'm an Avenger, baby. Uh, a little ad lib there. But Kang says in disbelief, you're an Avenger? And ponders to Scott, I've killed you before. <laughs> okay. 
that's pretty dope. That's pretty dope. And obviously, he's alluding to the idea that we know that, you know, Kang is a conqueror. Kang has traveled the multiverse. Kang has come across many different versions of Scott, the Avengers, so on and so forth. Maybe some Fantastic Four, which we'll get into in a little bit. But I like that, man. I like that. Again, I like the switch in Scott Lang's character. Again, he's very pompous. He's very arrogant. He's his ego. Is he, where is his ego coming from, Scott? Last time I saw you, you were so happy to see your daughter. You you were you were you know in your fr franchise. Your daughter was your main priority. You want to leave aside the the criminal life and be a good dad. But now things are changing. So again, I, I talked about Peyton Reed. Let's switch it up again. Let's make still focus on the family and all that stuff. But let's let's change our heroes a little bit, right? And again, the inclusion of Case Cassie Lang being in jail. So that's I don't want to say dark, right? But it's it's different. It's it's I, I dare to say the word more grittier than the other two films. Um, I will say, and this is a complete side note. No one said anything about Luis. Michael Pena's character, who is the highlight of that franchise. I'm telling y'all right now, again, I said how I'm excited about Kang, about the Quantum Realm, about all, and, and, and MODOK. I didn't even mention MODOK. They said that he was, there was a shot of MODOK in there. Forget all that. If Michael Pena's Luis ain't in Ant-Man and Quantum Manium, throw it away. Get rid of it. I don't even want to see it. I don't want to hear about it. I'm not going to watch it. I'm totally joking. But I'm going to need him in the film. Um, but let me know in the chat, guys. I'm going to pivot over to you guys here in a second. How are we feeling about this? Again, this is the launching pad of Phase 4. Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumanium, is the beginning of the multiverse saga. So let me know how y'all feel about that. So let's go ahead and switch over to uh, the chat and see what's up. All right. <clears throat> let me catch up here. Um, do you think since they gave us so much, they're gonna get trailers and teasers for it? Yeah, uh, well, I don't say 100%, but I'm pretty confident in that. Yeah, and not only that, I feel like they're gonna also announce things like uh, Deadpool, Mutants, and X Men, so on and so forth. But I think we will get and probably get the footage that they showed at Comic Con, probably shown at D23 as well. So, definitely agree with you there. Black Panther coming to save face for hey. We'll get into that a little bit later. We'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, I have been looking for Kang image all day, unsuccessful. Well, Coop, I said that as far as um, the public's concerned, this is the closest we're going to get to seeing Kang. Again, we, we can't get a full glimpse of him, but from what I heard, again, from the footage, they say he's rocking more of the classical look of the green uh, suit. Um, obviously, his skin, I think they said his skin is going to be blue versus purple uh, or the other way around. So, yeah, we haven't gotten like the full look of Kang, but this is this is as close as we're going to get, Coop, me and you, the normies, right? With the people that didn't attend Comic-Con last night. And, and by the way, Coop, I'm very surprised, and we, we're going to say this little look. I'm surprised the leaked footage hasn't come out. I'm surprised no one was like, oh, that's Kang. Let me go ahead and post that on instagram i'm surprised none of that so i i will say i did see a quick leak and i'm not gonna play it here but i saw like a five second leak of the um guardians footage and it, it looked really great for the five seconds i saw but yeah man i'm surprised that no one was like yeah you come kevin come yeah and like i'm very surprised and i wouldn't be surprised as i'm probably talking there's probably a video on twitter with some of this footage but uh neither here nor there like i said this is the closest we're gonna get to kang before D23. I think D23 they're gonna probably uh reveal the look of Kang um and all that stuff. <clears throat> I really wish that Kang wasn't that. Well, I'll tell you what, real, it's the only thing that's making me excited for it. So <laughs> um yeah, it's a and there there's a reason why. There's a reason why he's in that film, not only because he is so integral to the multiverse, but also this quantum realm idea. Think about him as a character. Kang is a conqueror of time. What do we learn about the quantum realm and in game? It can manipulate time, so it makes sense that he would. I don't. I don't want to say out of all the projects, <coughs> excuse me, but out of the, all the immediate projects, that makes more sense as far as regarding the time. Again, what did we meet Kane and Loki? What was that show about? Multiverse, time travel, all that different stuff. So it makes it makes narrative sense that he would be involved in that story that deals that dives into the time realm. So, or not the time realm, but dealing with time travel that we know from. Um, you know, uh, the quantum realm. And and also, there's many more things to learn about the quantum realm. There's many more elements of, you know, Michelle Pfeiffer. She she has powers from the quantum realm. Ghosts, she obtained powers from the quantum realm. 
I wouldn't be surprised just kind of thinking in my head now, knowing that there's time travel involved, there's multiverse involved, and now, you know, going back to Doctor Strange here, America Chavez. That would be a pretty important character to that I think would be involved in Ant-Man. Potentially, no, there's no confirmation of that. But I would imagine that she would be a, a very helpful individual to be able to travel across multiverses. So I'm, I'm really intrigued to see what they do there. Uh, Coop de Blee says, Ant-Man and Wasp there. <laughs> it's been a minute, Coop. Like, literally, like I said, I've only seen the film twice. And, and I... We might have we might have to do a watch along. We might have to schedule a watch along. Come uh, what is it in February, my birthday month? We're gonna do a watch along for the first Ant Man and Ant Man two, and see how we feel about it. <laughs> uh, Coop says it's one of the worst movies. Yeah, you know what, Coop? Just on that note, I'm just curious because I can't think off top where it's ranked on my uh, thirty. Was it thirty thirty or twenty nine films in MCU? It is currently for me, Coop. It is number twenty five out of twenty nine. That's where it's ranked. And my worst film is, is, is Iron Man 2. So, yeah, it's 25th for me, bro. That's where it is on my list. Uh, Kang needs to be heavy hitters. And hopefully, yeah, like I said, I think that they're going to, there's going to be some some boosting in that film. There's going to be some power scaling, which Marvel has a huge issue with that. But I think they're going to definitely boost Scott. Um, and I also think they're going to, there's going to be more surprises in that film than what we can imagine. Because, again, Scott, Kate, uh, Cassie, and, um, uh, hope and you know, uh, the whole Lang family that ain't enough for Kang. So, I think there's going to be maybe a maybe another announcement coming from who else is involved with uh, taking on Kang. And, and who knows, too? Again, there's variants of Kang, maybe Jonathan Majors. There's another version of him that's going to help Ant Man fight against Kang. So, that that can be a possibility as well, as well as maybe another Avenger or two. Yeah, they can't, they can't, they can't, they can't hang with him. <clears throat> the first Avengers or first Ant Man was good, but the second one kind of um, stemmed out of the franchise for me. Yeah, I know for a lot of people, man, it's a lot. It's, it's on the bottom of the list for a lot of people. Definitely, definitely know. Definitely know that they don't know what to do with Ant Man besides adding a family member to the uh, the storyline. Boring. Yeah, you know, I think initially, again, just going back to when Ant Man, what was that? Twenty fifteen. It was a Phase Two, right? Yeah, twenty fifteen. That was prior to the acquisition of uh, Fox, right? And X-Men and Fantastic Four. <clears throat> and I think the idea was probably to use Ant-Man as a somewhat of a Marvel family. Um, not to the extent of that, um, you know, Fantastic Four, but kind of that branching off in that that demographic. Like, you know, we got the height, we, or I should say we got the action films, you know, more of the uh, more serious films. And then they have to hit on that demographic of the family Disney oriented type of thing. So I think that's what Ant-Man was occupying that space, obviously, prior to, uh, to uh, Fantastic Four, which. Another thing I'm just thinking about. If they do announce Fantastic Four at D23. And we know that Fantastic Four will be introducing phase six. I'm not saying to have the whole family in Fantastic Four involved in Ant-Man, but maybe one or two members helping out Ant-Man. Just, again, to establish the Fantastic Four and, again, tying it to Kang and all the stuff with the Kang being a distant cousin of Reed Richards. So I'm telling y'all, man, Ant-Man might have some, some surprises up its sleeve that we never would have imagined. So I think there's a reason why it kicked off the franchise. Um and I think there's some surprises. And again, I'm I could be completely wrong, but I think there's a reason why Ant Man is starting off this franchise, and not just to introduce Kang, but to also to introduce some more some other things. And it might overshadow Ant Man, which I'm honestly okay with. <laughs> I think they're going to be comedy value and Kang, low key storylines. Wait, I think they're going to going for the comedy value of Kang and low key his lines. Maybe well, well, keep in mind, Moon. That was a that wasn't Kang. That was uh, he who remains. So that was the guy that. Ultimately, as he said in his little beautiful mo monologue in front of Loki and Sylvie, he was the one that ultimately he uses, uh, he uses, what was the thing, Goliath? He used the creature to subdue and defeat, you know, the other, <clears throat> to conquer all the other uh, variants of himself. So that wasn't Arcane. That was he who remains, who's no longer on the table. So that whole, con which I love, by the way. That ain't gonna be Kang. Kang is more about that uh, that action. He's about conquering. So we're gonna see a different version of that character. Which again, <sighs> the world's gonna see how incredible Jonathan Majors because all of his roles so far, he has shown us comedy, drama, action, seriousness, hero moments. The dude has it all. So the world's gonna see that on full display. 
that's a lot of pressure to put on him, but uh, I'm very excited to see uh, what he what he has to offer. And again, the the fact that Marvel's putting a lot on his shoulders, like he's he's the Thanos of of this of this phase, which is a a, a huge amount of pressure, but also a huge opportunity for him. So I, I think he's gonna step up to the plate for sure. <clears throat> yes, yes, thumbs up, thumbs up. Uh, just he just sounds like trying to make it. <laughs> Don't care about that. Yeah, I, th I think a lot of you are kind of in the same boat as I am. Michael Pena is the heart. Yeah, I 100% agree with that. He's the heart, the soul, everything. <laughs> we get into phase five, but phase four, six of the multiverse saga. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, Ant Man is lower to, yeah. And I think Ant Man, well, Ant Man one is a little bit higher for me. <coughs> Excuse me. Ant Man one is uh, 19. He's, he's 19 on my 29 list, um, which is, you know, middle of the pack um all right so yeah so we we talked ant-man um and, and you all like i said are sharing a lot of the okay i'm gonna have to um look up look that up my friend uh let's see here the quantum realm is ultimate MacGuffin. they will change how it functions to suit the story yeah yeah i mean cool <clears throat> That is a not only a Marvel thing, an MCU thing. That's a comic thing, bro. They they do that in the comics all the time. They they switch things up. They you know, ran, uh, um, um, modify things to fit the narrative. So and, and we and again they have that right to do so because we don't we really don't know the function of the quantum realm, right? We we really haven't even dove into you know for my Stranger Things fans out there, like what what is the upside down, right? Um, we have very little information about the quantum realm. So at this point, they can. I don't want to say they can do whatever they want, but they can do it into a sense that it could fit the narrative and see how it plays out. So we'll see, man. <clears throat> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm excited for Kang. I will pass on that respect. To, hey, it's it's. Uh, are you saying you were passing on, on the excitement level of uh, Quantum Manium? Yeah, narrowly it fits, but the cast not uh, especially. Uh, yeah, Vaginally Lily, I was surprised that they brought uh, – I, honestly, I was surprised they brought her on stage because there was a lot of a lot of stuff she said in the last few years that I can definitely see Disney not being too um, too happy with. <clears throat> yeah, it's bottom of the list, bottom tier for me. Off topic, watch Multiverse of Madness again last night. And it was okay on a rewatch. I don't know. I wasn't excited to watch again. Yeah, we did a rewatch uh, when it dropped on Disney Plus, and I, I'm still um, I'm still you know pretty pleased with the film. Again, uh, as I've told y'all when we reviewed it and and did the discussions about it i'm a horror fan and i really appreciate the, the the levels of of horror that sam raymond was able to add to the film and um just gave me an idea of what maybe we can expect as far as supernatural moving forward with blade and, and werewolf by night and so on and so forth <clears throat> i was hoping for my opinion to change no understandable all right so let's move over to okay so we talked ant-man um we all seem to be on the same page in regards to you know Ant-Man's cool, but he ain't really about that life, but he gonna have to be about that life when Kane come in there. So we talk Quantumanium. There's not a lot to talk about with Secret Invasion. Um, right now, as we know, it's six episodes, which is terrible, um, but I'm hoping that this is six episodes of a grander, more larger story, whether that's in the form of a season two, season three of Secret Invasion, whether that's a actual movie because again we have to remember when it comes to this new phase um let me move this out of the way <clears throat> there are and i'm looking at phase six there are there's one two three four five six projects that hasn't been announced in phase six so <clears throat> and we know leading up to secret wars they're gonna have to really you know show more of secret wars and and add more to scrolls in particular so i think one of those missing projects might be something that's more tied into the secret invasion because secret invasion it's it's a pretty large story that needs more than six episodes to tell the story um so again going back to that i'm not overly excited um i love you know hearing what i've hear, heard so far <clears throat> Apparently, it's more in the veins of a thriller, more in the veins of Winter Soldier, which gets me excited. Um, I'm very excited to get more Nick Fury. He's been MIA for a while. We've seen him in Far From Home. We've seen him in, you know, Infinity War. Uh, and those were just like post credit scenes. So it's going to be nice. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's going to be nice to catch up to Nick Fury and, and find out what he's been up to. And then also, 
Amelia Clark for my Game of Thrones fans out there. Khaleesi coming back to TV. Very excited for that. Her movie career hasn't been that great, but again, I'm excited for the Queen of Dragons to come back on TV. Um, we got her. We got Sam. We got uh, Olivia Coleman, uh, who is an, an, an Academy Award winning actress. Um, we have Ben Mendelsohn coming back. Um, um, who else is a, it's, it's a really stacked cast. I think they said Rhodey's going to be a part of it, Don Cheeto. Um, and I would imagine there's going to be a lot of other cameos and characters because the big thing about Secret Evasion is who can you trust? Are you a scroll? Are you a scroll? Are you, a, it's going to be very interesting to see all how that plays out and, and finding out that the scrolls have been maybe a part of some of the more big decisions in the MCU but behind the scenes. Is, is the president of this world a scroll? Is the, you know, the, um, you know, Secretary of Defense, there's, there's so many possibilities. Again, they say it's a thriller, so it's going to be kind of a, I don't want to say spy espionage, but it's going to be kind of like a who are you, can I trust you type of uh, show. Again, six episodes kind of brings me down. Also, the, the uh, Benedict, uh, not Benedict, what is my man's name from uh, One Out of Miami? Um, ah, I can't think of his name right now, but he's a really great actor. I'm really excited to see him in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So the cast is great. The premise is there. The storyline is so integral and so large in scale. But again, six episodes. That That's wild, bro. That is wild to me that they're doing that in six episodes. But I'm hoping that, again, this is just a part one of an ongoing story. Um, I'm going to get it out the way now. I don't care about Echo. I don't. Unfortunately, again, you can go back and watch the tape. The stuff they did to her, the bait and switch, she's the bad guy, but really not the bad guy. She just misunderstood, and it's really kingpin and all that stuff. It didn't work for me. This is no taking away from the, the actress that's playing Echo, um, and I'm really excited for her to get her big opportunity to have her show. But again, hearing all of the other stuff behind the scenes, and it's been confirmed. Matter of fact, I think I actually took a little little screenshot of it that um, Echo will be did – I, did I save it here? That they did say that Matt Murdock, aka, yep, here it is. Let me pull this up for y'all now. Um, I don't even know why it's called Echo at this point. And this is a, this is another six episode series. So, Jesus. Um, <clears throat> so as y'all, and we're gonna talk about Daredevil because I'm really excited to talk about that. But as y'all can see, uh, Charlie Cox and Vincent D'Onofrio will, will reunite for Daredevil: Born Again, 18 episodes. Very excited for that. Um, Cox will appear in She-Hulk, but then both. Charlie and D'Onofrio will appear in Echo. Okay. Um, first off, I don't really even know. Like, okay. Based on Hawkeye, she finds out that her father was killed by Kingpin. He put the hit out on him. Um, you know, he hired the um, Ronin to do so. Right? And I can't even remember. I didn't even like Hawkeye. I don't even remember why he did that. The, the, I think the father wanted to go a different way or he wanted to get out of the, the their gang. Or I, I can't even remember. But anyway, she finds it out, shoots him in the head, but we know he wasn't going to die. And I think that's like straight out of the comics, by the way. I think there's a comic book run where Echo shoots her, him. He has like an eye patch. So they're going to play into that. And apparently, if rumors are to be said or to be true, Kingpin, his main mission from this show, Echo, leading into the big, you know, Daredevil Born Again series, he's going to be running for mayor um, and all that different stuff. So, but I'm just trying to think of, narratively speaking, why should I care about Echo? Like, what what's the narrative? What's the story? Again, that's why you watch the show, Elliot. Again, I'm I'm just throwing out there like my like lack of interest um, based on on Hawkeye. Like, so she is she gonna go out? Like, where is she going? Is she seeking answers? Like. I don't care. <laughs> I'm just being honest. Uh, again, I'm going to watch it because I'm a Marvel fan, but it's just the, the least exciting project for me for, for uh, Phase 5 is, is Echo Series. But again, I hope to be proven wrong. Um, before I move over, let me see if you guys have any thoughts on uh, on Echo and, and uh, Secret Invasion uh, and everything we talked about so far. Um, I would imagine he is, um, or at least a version of him, because again, based on how Loki ended, Kang's statue was in that he was the conqueror. He conquered that world, or he's he's the he's conquered the TVA of a, or reinvented it. So yeah, I would imagine so. Oh yeah, it's gonna be a glow up like no other. I tell you. Um, yeah, we're gonna talk about that here in, in a second, real. Um, because there, as you can see on the screen now, <laughs> eighteen episodes of uh, Daredevil. That's you know that's three series in one, uh, based on the six episode thing. 
Um, I heard that. Yeah, we're going to talk about that here in a second, which I'm glad they're breaking that mold. Sam Jackson said he filmed three Marvel projects at the same time. He's going to be in Ant-Man 3, the Marvels. Yeah, yeah, that makes, yeah, Ant-Man 3 would make sense. And yeah, like you said, the Marvel. yep. Uh, ben Mendelsohn, yep, 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 yep. Uh, is Elliot my twin? Echo, no, no, Echo, bro. It's a Echo, Echo, Echo. We can echo it all together. I don't think the show, well, I don't want to say I don't think the show's going to be bad. I just don't care about the show. I don't care about it. But trailers and then actually watching it can change my mind. Because again, and we'll talk about this, the the end of phase five is very grounded. It's a very grounded base Marvel story. Um, with Daredevil, with Echo, Thunderbolts, Captain America. So, you know, while we're preparing for the cosmic side of phase six, and I think if I'm being honest with you all, the movies I gravitate towards in MCU is the more grounded stories. Winter Soldier, um, you know, Black Panther, uh, so on and so forth. Those are more steeped within reality and steeped in the, on the ground level. So maybe Echo can hit on those notes, hopefully. <coughs> uh, is Echo going to be? No, it's a TV series, six episode TV series. Is She Hulk? Uh, yeah, so She Hulk is going to be nine episodes, uh, and and she's getting nine episodes. WandaVision got nine, and what if got? 10, if I'm not mistaken. So they're experimenting with more than six, which, you know, is a good thing. Yeah, we're going to get a lot of Daredevil, which I'm here for. Echo is all right. Exciting. Yeah. They need to start working on Wanda, what kind of series? Yeah, which I think they are, which, oh, that's another thing, Coop. Bring up a good point. And again, going back to those eight projects of phase six, they didn't mention Armor Wars which they did say they're still working on it, um, but they didn't mention that. They didn't mention the Wakanda series. There's multiple series apparently out there that they uh, you know, are getting prepared for. Um, they didn't mention Deadpool. They didn't mention, obviously, the X-Men, but there was a couple. There was another series that they had announced that I don't think they mentioned, but I definitely know Armored Wars and also, like you mentioned, Wakanda series was not mentioned. So a couple things they didn't bring up last night. Uh, it would be better if they didn't shoot Fisk and Hawkeye and use it. Thank you. And that's another reason why I'm not a fan of Hawkeye. They just cram, like literally the first three episodes, we're thinking, oh, Echo, she ain't no one to, that prosthetic leg. She has combat, hand-to-hand -hand comp. You know, she can get, hold her own. And then, boom. And then, and, and again, what they did to King Pan is on, on a whole nother level, a whole conversation of that. But yeah, it was just like, come on, bro. Y'all could have saved that. Y'all could have, you should have just left Echo as the main, quote unquote, villain all the way through the end. And then, as you just point out beautifully, save that for her story. Well said. Well said. Yeah. <clears throat> Back home in New York. Oh, that's what's up. Right on time. Well, welcome, welcome. We've, uh, what, 45 minutes in. We, we've talked about a lot so far, but you're, 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 you're right on time. You are right on time. So I appreciate the love. And uh, back home, hey. Sound like you had a nice little vacation. So, uh, yeah, you, like I said, you're, you're perfectly on time. All right, so let's uh, let's see here. Coop said, yeah, your Hawkeye, it is my least favorite MCU show. I'm sorry. You can watch the tape to see my reasons why, but, yeah, I wasn't a fan of that series. <clears throat> Reintroducing the show. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, it, it's on the same wavelength. I think that's where her, the grounded level of the MCU is my, I appreciate what they're doing there and they're building out the Defenders potentially rebooting that franchise. So yeah, I, hey, I know I know a lot of people loved it, the Christmas vibes. I, and I enjoyed the things I liked about Hawkeye, Yelena, Kate Bishop. Um, that's it. <laughs> That's it for me. Uh, the the Ronin stuff was under underwhelming. There there should be so many more. Sh there should have been such more story on Ronin and the ramifications and the psyche of Clint killing people for five years. And there was only one little plot with that. And that was the whole Echo thing tied into that. I mean, I don't, I don't want to get on my soapbox, but yeah, I didn't like Hawkeye. But I'm glad you did. Well, that's good, Justin. I'm 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 hoping to like it, man. I really am. Faith has a lot going on. I'm hoping everything's together. Yeah, we'll yeah, we'll get into that. We'll get into that. What do you think about they're going to what do you think? Oh, I'm not going to, so we're talking five, phase five and six, but you know, we did the stream last night and I and I did a trailer reaction. We talked about it. Um, but to, to your question, what do you all think they're going they're doing with Hulk and She Hulk? So I'm gonna make this short because again, we talked about it last night. Um 
the I'm a, I'm a basketball fan. I'm a sports fan in particular. They're 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 putting the Hulk in the D League, um, the developmental league in this form of Disney Plus. He has been so terrible in the MCU. They said, you know what, Hulk, the Russo brothers didn't jack you up. We're gonna take you to the to the D League for a second, have fun. It's a comedy, enjoy it, Disney Plus, and then we're gonna maybe bring you back in a couple years because right now the Hulk needs a full revamp. Um, it the jokey Professor Hulk slang in one movie. Hulk, uh, Bruce Banner, and the next time we see him in Shang-Chi, and now he's doing yoga, it, it's a joke. So I think what they're doing to the Hulk is they're sending him back to the developmental league to rediscover who he is and to get back to smashing things, right? I don't, I don't, I don't find Hulk, Professor Hulk, at all good. So that's what I think they're doing with the Hulk. They're go back to the to the to the bullpen, go back to the to the gym and, and work on your anger. Get it back is what I'm saying. So that's what I think they're doing with them. So have fun with Disney Plus and then come back in the right mindset. I need you to smash things. Um, let's see here. Uh, what do you think about them rebooting Charlie Cox? And do you think it'll be the same? So they've alluded to it that what they're doing now is they're going to, from what I understand, they're going to pay homage and kind of little sprinkles of what happened in those Netflix series understanding that it's a different version. It's a multi, you know, we know that the multiverse is open. This is the 616 version of Daredevil versus the, you know, 313, whatever you want to call that universe. So there are, you know, moments of similarities, but this is their version of character. So they kind of have that free rights to kind of do what they want with the character and, and probably do the same with Luke Cage and Jessica Jones and Iron Fist and, and so on and so forth. So that's what I think. But they haven't flat out said that, but that's, the, that's what I think they're doing. Yeah. I didn't really care for it. <laughs> I hope we get a cameo from Spider-Man. Oh, do I have that quote? Do I have that quote? Because Kevin Feige did talk about that, which is a, a great little segue. Um, damn it. There it is. There and we're gonna I'm gonna save that. I'm gonna put a pin in that. Remind me of that. Um to talk about that because this goes back to the whole grounded level of the MCU. So we're gonna get to that. Um do <laughs> Y'all are like I feel like we're 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 all like the best of friends because you all think uh, a meme that I saw on Twitter. I'm like, oh, bro, this is perfectly summer, and we got some videos to show y'all. Um, ah, I thought I saved it. There was a meme that I saw that I'm like, yo, ah, man, I thought I saved it. Either way, it was to your point, Coop. It was it was showing a picture of. <laughs> Of the VFX people just being like, just like terrified of what's the cut. Damn, I thought I saved it. Is this it? Yes, 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 yes. yes. Hold, on, hold, on, hold, on, hold on, hold on, Let me, uh, let me make this bigger. So, to your point, Coop. Uh, and also, there's like one for uh, Homelander. Is so to Coop's point for y'all. Just put a little context to it. Let me. Uh, so there was an article that came in a couple weeks ago about the visual effects uh, industry. And how Marvel puts so much pressure on them to finish things within these unreasonable deadlines, right? And, you know, obviously you would think, I'm working for Marvel. I got this opportunity for my career. But a lot of people are like, it ain't it. <laughs> it's not as, as as hyped up as it might sound. So they they feel like Marvel is just not a good company to work for. They have these unrealistic expectations. And it's just so much. And and a lot of us have have kind of pointed out some of those visual effects not looking clean, right? And it's due to these unrealistic timelines. So to Coop's point, now that we have these next three years of two Avengers films, all these shows, all these movies, the visual effects teams are probably going crazy. Um, and uh, yeah, so actually this isn't the, damn, this isn't the one. This is the, this was funny though, because it's like the fans of Marvel going like, oh, Phase 4 is trash, I'm out of Marvel. And then after they see what they announced yesterday, they're like, I'm gone, I'm out of Marvel, I'm done with it. Never mind. Let me go back and get back into it. But there was, damn, I wish I had that meme. But it's essentially, uh, yeah, damn. Anyway, yeah, I Coop, I'm, I'm imagine people are scrambling their minds and like, damn, man, we we gonna have to clone ourselves pretty much. Um, let me take that down for a second. All right, let's see here. The, the Hulk disrespect must end. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Um, I think they should introduce Echo and Daredevil. Well, it's too late for that because she has her show coming out before his two years in advance. I'm interested in the world. Um, again, Justin, 
it's going to have to be another Hulk from another universe because it ain't going to be uh, Mark Ruffalo 616 Hulk because he that Hulk ain't ain't prepared for that storyline. So, yeah, if, if it is a series, it, it better be an Elseworld, uh, another version of the character. Yeah, they still got it. We got a couple weeks, a couple weeks before they uh, get that out. Fax, uh, they know. Yes, the, the disrespect is crazy. Crazy. All right. So what are we uh what are we what are we thinking? Echo, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see what's to come with Echo. But uh before we move on, again, we got 96 people watching live. We're, we're approaching the hour mark. Y'all are fantastic. Y'all are awesome. Y'all are dope. This is why I love this community. Um, we're having a good time. I hope you're having a good time. I'm having a good time. Uh, make sure to like, share, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. And of course, shout out to the replay gang. If you can do the same, it'd be greatly appreciated. All right, let's move on. Um, what's next on the, the list of films here? All right, let me get this out the way. We talk Ant-Man, we talk Secret Invasion, we talk Echo. Let's talk Guardians. Let's talk Guardians. So apparently Guardians, they show some footage. Not apparently, they did show footage. And at least I saw a little sneak peek online, a little, little leak, a little leak. And it was, it was, it was, I don't know. I love, so just a little content. I love Guardians of the Galaxy. I'm a big fan. Uh, the first one is in my top five of the MCU. Sue me. I love it. It's when you can hit me on an emotional level, like that first film did with Peter Quill and his mom and, and, and just tying it to family and seeing his mom, this cosmic situation going on with the power stone going against Ronan. He has his family and he sees his, like that film just hits me on another level. And plus I think it's a really good film. Guardians 2, I enjoy the hell out of it. It's probably, if I'm being honest with you all, visually speaking, one of the best looking MCU films that we've got to date. Like the visual, especially in 4K, the colors pop. It's it's beautiful to look at. And this is it's another good film, right? It's it's the ego and you know, ego and 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 his father and and Kurt Russell. Come on, he's killing it. Um some of the jokes weren't that funny. Some of the narrative, it took a little bit to kind of get into the main gist of it all. Uh, plus, the Guardians were split up for most of the film um, and all that stuff. But I still enjoy the film. And the soundtrack for both the films are fantastic. Um, so to say to say I'm a fan is an understatement. I'm a big fan of Guardians. And I'm really looking forward to Volume 3. Reasons being, James Gunn is back. Um, this man is in a groove. He's in a groove coming off of Suicide Squad, Peacemaker, and then going into this. Like, my man is hitting on all cylinders. I think he's, like, he's locked in. He's he's Black Mambo right now. He's locked in. He sees the end game. He sees the goal. He sees the finish line. He is running towards it. He is in a, 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 a mood, and I love it. Again, go back to Suicide Squad. Go back to Peacemaker. Um, you know, obviously DC projects, but I'm just talking about as a creative, as a, as a, as a director, as a writer, because he has his hands all in those projects, and this is his baby. He writes these films. He directs The Guardian. So I'm looking forward to see him continue to show how great of – and I know everyone has their thoughts on James Gunn. He's he's like the, the more – refined version of Taika Waititi because he kind of, you know, he plays on the jokes and plays on the more uh, outlandish stuff and situations. And I know that doesn't work for everyone, <clears throat> but to me, he's a little bit more tame than Taika at points. They're kind of similar, uh, but neither here nor there. I I'm looking forward to James coming back and, and finishing his story. Um, I'm very excited to see the Guardians again, more, more specifically Rocket. That's my favorite Guardians. Uh, I'm very excited for him, and it seems like this will be a Rocket story. Um, from my understanding, James Gunn said that at the root of the story is Rocket, him being the most uh, um, saddest creature in the universe, and it's it's tackling that. Um, the footage I saw was a baby Rocket, and I said this when we when we talked about it last night. You know, the big villain of this story is um, um, High Evolutionary, which I'm not too familiar with that character. But from what I know from the character, his whole deal. And we saw the actor come out dressed up in the, in the gear. And I saw some footage of that. Him like his whole thing is <clears throat> modifying human, modifying people, and modifying creatures, and and manipulating people's genetics and and different things of that nature, which makes sense tying it to Rocket because we know that he was genetically engineered. He was made by someone, right? So I think the high evolutionary was responsible for making Rocket. Um, and then Rocket's going to meet his maker, which he might actually, I think, you know, James is going to say that not every good story has to end with a killing or a death of, of, of characters, but I do think that, unfortunately, I think Rocket 
you know, when we first met him, he was selfish. He didn't want to be a part of anything, but now he has his family. He has his family back from Endgame, but I think he's going to ultimately sacrifice himself to save his family. But I could be wrong, um, but I think we're going to get that emotional connection with Rocket at the end of the story. But anyway, um, I'm excited for that. Excited for Rocket, seeing him back again with his team. Gamora is apparently the leader of the Ravengers, is what I've heard, which is very interesting. She found her way back into space after Endgame. Um, what else did we hear about it? Um, oh, Adam Warlock. They said there was a quick glimpse of him. Will Palmer, if I think of his name, uh, or Poulter, Will Poulter, I think is his name. Someone that I have been watching for a while. Meet the Millers. Um, he was in Detroit. He was in uh, uh, Midsummer. Um, he's a really good actor. But also, I appreciate commitment to the skill. And I'm referring to the physique that the man has. Uh, I don't have a picture of it, but you can look it up. Will uh, Poulter, the man is yoked. He's he's getting, because again, Adam Warlock from the comics, I mean, he's just, he's not only just uh, a powerful individual and being, but his his genetics are part of him, right? It's like, and even when you go back to Guardians 2, after like the 15th in, uh, in credit, the uh, the high priestess or whatever that character name was, was my beauty, my my. And, you know, did she say, well, I think she said my Adam, I'm going to call him Adam is what she said, but it, like, that's part of him. Like he has, like, it's part of the role to look the part. So I'm really excited to see Adam Warlock. <clears throat> I've read some of, some of the stuff that he's been a part of in the comics, like in particularly the infinity war uh, comics. So he's a very powerful being. So I'm really excited to see that. Um, and just excited to see how they end this franchise. They did say this is the end of an era. This is the end of this iteration of the guardians. They're going to probably remix it, you know, get, you know, swap out a rocket and, and, you know, Cosmos is going to be in the dog Cosmos, um, you know, bring in Adam Warlock, um, bring in Nova, you know, they can remix it, right. They can add some new characters to the guardians. That's the whole beauty of the guardians. <clears throat> There's many different iterations of them. So I'm excited to see how they wrap it all up and to probably get emotional. Cause I, I really love these characters. So, um, let me know in the chat guys, how y'all feeling about guardians? Are you excited? Is there more things about high evolutionary that you all know about that I might not, didn't bring up? Um, <clears throat> so on and so forth. Let me know your thoughts on all of that. I think Spider-Man 4 as well. Yeah, I think Spider-Man is part of that. Well, again, they can't um, say anything about Spider-Man because it's technically still Sony, even though they, they work together. But they can't be like Spider-Man 4 because it's not part of like Disney. It's not part of Marvel <clears throat> in a sense of like their ownership of the IP. Um, but yeah, I would imagine Spider-Man is somewhere in the mix within the next couple phases. Love Guardians. Yeah, I, I love Guardians. I, I I have no problem. Like I said, Guardians 1 is in my top five in the MCU. Yeah, I like the first one more. Yeah, Adam Warlock. I, I'm really excited to meet him on the big screen, live action for the first time. <clears throat> also, I'm I'm Wonder Man Stan, so the show. Yeah, Wonder Man is going to definitely be uh, something that I would imagine if the rumors are to be true, to be true about Henry Golden will be announced at D23. Oh, you haven't seen the second guard? It's good. It's on Disney Plus if you have it. I definitely recommend it. Do you think that Thor God will appear again? Oh, Thor? Um, yeah, for sure. And I don't know, again, going back to that, that image here, if Thor is um, the missing link. Is he uh, one of those projects between, you know, in phase six, which I would imagine so, you know, they're going to need all the help they, they they can get. So, yeah, I think Gore, Gore, I think Gore, I keep saying it again, <laughs> Thor 5 <laughs> is a part of that. And um, also that character, without spoiling thing, that was introduced in, in Thor, Love and Thunder, will uh, make an appearance as well. Um, okay. So with that being said, they'll probably, yeah, at this point, I think they will kill Drax. Um, I like Dave Batista. He's a really, he's shown me a lot from his uh, introduction to Drax. Didn't say much, didn't do much in Mission Impo or um, uh, Bond Spectre. Um, he's a good actor, man. I like him. Um, but I'll, I'll be honest with you all, as far as the Drax character, <clears throat> and I love how Marvel has taken off his full name. You know, <laughs> we refer to him as Drax, <clears throat> but his name is Drax the Destroyer. Very similar to the Hulk. Uh, he is the butt of the joke. He's just a joke at this point, right? He was supposed to be on this quest of finding Thanos. Bring me Thanos. That was supposed to be his moment, right? After killing his family, which I think there was there a rumor that I read that his, his family was still alive or something. Um, 
I don't know that I might just totally make that up, but I, I think I saw something about that that Drax finds out that his family or, or his daughter didn't die when you know at the hands of Thanos. So, uh, but anyway, I think Drax, yeah, I think he's met his end. I think number one, the actor wants to explore more opportunities. He's going to probably work with James Gunn again in the future, maybe in DC projects with no without less prosthetics. But I think he's you know, I think he's just tired of he appreciates the role, but I think you know, the the eight hours of prosthetics, and also I think he knows his character has definitely took a backseat to uh the narrative yeah i think those two are probably gone by the end of the day um yeah nova he's coming don't be surprised if we get a nova announcement come uh d23 and he might i mean it makes sense i and we'll get to that later but phase six will be so cosmic it will be so epic it's going to be so satisfying we're going to get i think nova we're going to get uh silver surfer uh, it's gonna get it's gonna get crazy, and of course we're gonna get X Men. Oh my goodness, we're gonna get to Phase Six here in a second. But uh, let me see. Maybe we'll go around uh, around the table and kind of wrap up. Yeah, because again, Loki, I'm a, I'm excited for. If you all don't know, that's my that is my favorite Disney Plus show for many reasons. One being, I, I think the it stuck the landing from beginning to the end and kind of of a narratively speaking stand stand pretty consistent. Um. I think it has the best supporting cast with Morbius and, and all the different people than TVA, Wumu Mushaku, uh, Hunter B18, I think was her name, Ra uh, Ramona, Ravona, whatever her name is. I know she has ties to Kang in the comics, so it's going to be interesting to see with what they do with her character, um, you know, with, with Sylvie up to. Um, but one of the reasons I love Loki, and I would play it, but it'll get taken down. <clears throat> if you all if y'all follow me, you know I'm a I'm a production. I love good production, right? From a visual standpoint, but also from like uh evoking emotions via the soundtrack and the score. Uh Natalie Holt, who's coming back for season two, who's the composer of the first low-key score. Low-key score goes so hard. It is one of the best superhero scores I've ever heard in my life. It's not like top, you know, three, but it's top five for me. Like that low-key score goes so hard. And I am so excited that they brought her back. And I'm, and I think who I, she is going to be composing one of the Star Wars projects, if I'm not mistaken. Um, anyway, I'm going on a tangent, but yes, I'm, I'm looking forward to low key season two. Uh, the Marvels, I'm going to make this quick. Yeah, we'll see. I enjoyed Miss Marvel. That, that honestly is one of the reasons that if I, if there are, is if there's an ounce of excitement, it comes from Miss Marvel. I enjoyed Makala, uh, uh, um, Makala, uh, Kamala Khan, and I and I love her family dynamic. I can't wait to see, uh, you know, her mom and her dad and her brother back because they are they have been confirmed on the IMDb page at least they will be involved in the story um, as far as the Marvels go. So I'm excited to get them back. I'm excited to see. Um, Monica back, right? Monica Rambeau and, and Photon and see her powers and see the relationship and the tension she that's clearly there that she has for Carol for leaving her all those years when she was a kid and when she lost her mom, Maria. Uh, and then, you know, then is Brie Larson. And let me be clear. I like Brie Larson. I think she's a fantastic actress. Uh, short term, short term, twelve. Uh, Daniel Critton, who actually is the director of Shang Chi, one of his first films, small independent film, really great film with Keith Stanfield's in it. She's great in that. Uh, Room or The Room, great film. Um, I thought she was really solid in the Jamie Foxx, uh, Michael B. Jordan, uh, Just Mercy. So I think Brie Larson is a great actress. I think the directors, the writers did her a disservice in her film. It, it, she was very stagnant. She was very, she was, it was, she was detached. I was, I felt like arm's length distance from her, right? I didn't feel like that's a hero that I want to continue their story. So I'm hoping that Nia DaCosta, who's another good up and coming uh, director, you know, I wasn't the biggest fan of Candyman, uh, but I saw some good direction, just not a good story in that movie. Um, but she's great. So I'm hoping that Nia is going to put her funk on it. Which we already saw that. If you all don't know, Nia DaCosta, she directed the post credit scene in Miss Marvels, which uh, included uh, Carol. So, and we saw the new look. She's like, okay, Carol, you got some swag to you. This is like the 19th costume change, but she's got some swag to her. I like the, you know, the look and the design. So, I'm hopeful for the Marvels. I've, I've heard some things. There's going to be a musical and, and all that. We'll see what comes of it. And obviously, again, her, uh, Kamala and Carol switch places. So where does she go? What was she doing? What has she been doing this whole time? So we'll see. 
we'll see what comes of the Marvels. Um, Ironheart, I'm excited to meet Riri and Black Panther uh, and see Dominic Thorne and obviously continue the story and the narrative of, okay, the weapons of the MCU, right? If they get caught in the wrong hands, Armored Wars, Riri Williams, Doom, Doom Wars. That might be the next saga when he gets his hands on these powers. And some people are bringing up the, and we'll talk about Black Panther when we wrap it up, but maybe Dr. Doom is behind this war between the Atlanteans and the Wakandans. So I'm very intrigued to see what they do with Riri Williams. Uh, culture, I'm here for it. We're going to probably, I think they say she's from Chicago too. I'm from Chicago. Uh, and I'm really excited to get more of her and obviously see her in Black Panther. So I'm looking forward to Ironheart. And also uh, my man, Anthony Ramos uh, is in it. Um, they announced some other people attached to it. It's going to be, it's going to be a good show. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Blade, baby, coming out next November. <laughs> Listen, I was nervous when I heard about them bringing Blade up because obviously Disney, kid-friendly, blood, no, 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 no blood. Kevin, we can't go to those, level, those levels. But, man, I think people forget that Marvel has gotten dark, man. Go back and watch Winter Soldier. Go back and watch Captain America First Avenger. A man was popping people with, with the with the assault rifle. He threw a man into the, the propeller of the wings and the blood. Like, that's an example. Chopping off Thanos' head. Multiverse of Madness got creepy, got very demonic, if I'm being honest. So they're getting there. They're realizing that, okay, little Timmy, little Jimmy, uh, you know, that kid at, at in 2008 was 10 years old, right? We fast forward 13 years, little Timmy, little Jimmy, little Susan, she's an adult now. We can get more adult adult oriented content. And yes, you can give us the group show for the kids, Miss Marvel for the kids, Young Avengers for the kids. But that those kids and those, you know, me as an adult, I was, you know, what, what was I? I was uh, 2008. I was uh, late, late teens, early 20s, whatever. I'm an adult. I'm a grown ass man, right? I want to see those more mature stories, and I think Kevin Feige and the, and the creators know that that we can't, we we have to mature with our audience, right? So I think my fear of Blade being neutered, and it will, it it won't be Blade ninety eight. It won't be Wesley Sam saying, "Motherfucker, you know who I am." <laughs> it ain't gonna get to those levels, right? But I think it's gonna get to those more darker, mature, supernatural vampire hunting moments i really do feel they're gonna deliver for the most part as far as pg-13 can go um and i say that too also think of the announcement the other day if y'all followed the uh the, the marvel the comics the animated side of it they announced that marvel zombies will be tvma which is mature audience which means little kids can't watch that show on disney plus i mind you they're gravitating towards mature content. Deadpool 2 has, or 3 has been confirmed to be rated R. So I'm not saying that Blade will be straight up rated R. But what I'm saying is Marvel realizes they have to grow with its audience, right? So I'm hopeful for Blade. I'm very excited to see Mahershala Ali. I'm very excited to see uh, Aaron Pierre, I believe his name is. Uh, I've, I've seen two projects of his. One I didn't really care for, which was M. Night Shyamalan's old. And the other one was uh, Barry Jenkins. Um, underground railroad he was fantastic in that so i'm really excited to see him um really excited to get again i go back to my horror fans out there vampires werewolves goblins and ghouls and witches and supernatural man that stuff is really exciting so i'm really excited to see that side of the mcu maybe open into doors to Midnight Suns. We already got Doctor Strange. We got the Black Knight introduced. We got Daredevil. We got, you know, Blade now, Punisher, uh, Ryan Gosling as, uh, 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 you know, a Ghost Rider. Who knows? Moon Knight. So listen, and then Agatha, whatever her show is, which we'll talk about, the Chaos, or the Coven of Chaos or whatever. I'm excited for Blade, as you all can see. They're shooting in October. It's coming out in November. Let's go. Daywalker. I'm here for it. Uh, before we move on, I've been on this soapbox for a while. Let me check in with the chat again. We got a hundred and a hundred people, a hundred people even in the chat. I thank you all for tuning in. Uh, as y'all can see, I love talking Marvel. I love talking about the stuff with you all speculating, theorizing, predicting. It's a lot of fun and we have a lot of fun here. So if this is your first time tuning in, consider subscribing. Uh, we have uh, a lot of great stuff that we cover, movies, shows, 
doing these type of streams. Uh, and then for my OGs in the chat, y'all are awesome. We crossed 30K last week. We're approaching 35K on the way to 40K. So I can't thank y'all enough. So again, just a reminder to like the video, share the video, Instagram, Twitter, share it, tag me in it as well. Um, and let's keep this conversation going. So let me see what y'all are talking about because uh, we've been talking for a bit. So let me see how y'all feeling about all these uh, announcements that we got here. Um, okay, okay, okay. Let's see. Yeah, Drax. Yeah, we talked about him. Nova series. That would be pretty cool. Um, I think X Men will be their own phase. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> shoot. Yeah, phase seven. X Men. Let's go. Uh, man, you should do a show about storyline. Oh yeah, yeah, man, we should do a show about storyline from MCU that went nowhere. For yeah, that's some stuff that yeah, for sure. Um, bro. Coop, am I right, bro? Is that score not like I listen to that score in my car? You know what I'm saying? It's that meme when you you mean mugging on the side of the street and you you know you're in your zone and you know they're like I don't want to mess with him. Meanwhile, I'm listening to Loki. <laughs> listen, man, that Loki score go it it it, it goes hard. It, it goes hard, bro. She needs to compose. Yes, Coop. Yes, yes. Again, I can't remember. I think they said that she's she was confirmed to be a part of some Star Wars joint. Um, I gotta look it up. I gotta look it up. I'm sorry, guys. I know that about scores and composers and stuff like that. Uh, Natalie Holt. I could have sworn her next project was some Star Wars <clears throat> related. Uh, it's Bad Girl. She's doing Bad Girl. Yes, that's gonna be dope. Um, that is dope. I like that. I like that a lot. I was already excited for that, but she did Obi Wan. I didn't know that. I wasn't a fan of Obi Wan, by the way. But okay, um, awesome. I'm excited to get Natalie Holt back. And yes, Coop, if she can do the Avengers score, I'm here for it, bro. All right. Um, yeah, we'll talk about that. Eternal Shang Chi, uh, Iron or uh, uh, Spider Man, Deadpool. Yeah, there's there's some um, films that are missing in that slate that I think, to your point, um. Come on, Coop. It did deserve it, man. It made the show. It elevated the show. It fit it perfectly. <laughs> but hopefully Marvel knows. They got her signed for the next 10 years. I, I wouldn't be surprised, Coop, if they get her to the Avengers course. They, that would be dope. Yeah, Wanda's still out there. You know, is she going to get a show? Is she going to get her movie? Well, she already has a show, but I, I've heard rumors that Wanda will maybe get her own solo movie. Um, can be, oh, man. Um, which would be cool. Um Let's see. I'm most excited for the Marvels. That's what's up. I, as you know, I already talked about it, but I'm glad you. I'm, listen, I have hope. Nia DaCosta, Kamala, they gonna boost her up. They gonna help out Miss. They gonna say, Carol, you need a, you need a, uh, you need a change. You need, you need to get, get up with the time. You need to get some, some, some swag on you. So I think Nia's gonna help her. I think Kamala's gonna help her, and I also think Maria is gonna help her. So we gonna, we gonna see a, a glow up for Carol for sure. <laughs> I do not like Carol Danvers. I do not like. Am I, am I reading that wrong? Did I say? I thought you said you're okay. You're excited for it, but that doesn't mean that you liked her previous film. Respect. I got you. I'm excited for. Yep. 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 Uh, Doctor Doom will be. In a, that's what they say, Ryan. So we're gonna talk about uh, Black Panther when we wrap up. But yeah, that's that's the rumor that he's behind all this stuff going on here. Uh, the war between the Wakandans and the um, Atlanteans and yeah, Doom with Vibranium. It makes sense. It just makes sense. He's gathering all the little, let me get Iron Man technology. Let me maybe get some of that Ant Man technology. Let me go ahead and get some of that Vibranium to build his army. Mm -mm, I'm here for it. We need blood. Yeah, we do. For Blade, yes, we do. It's not Doom. It's <laughs> we need that Mephisto spinoff, right? Stop door. We need that Mephisto uh, TV show on Disney Plus. Yeah, I'm excited for Blade too. Um, all right, Mephisto, man, y'all remember those days last year? Yeah, Marvel Zombies is gonna be lit. It was. I love the What If episode with the zombies and Wanda wilding out and heads chopping. Oh man, I was a fan. I was a fan. Um, okay. Uh, what, what we got here? We wait, wait, wait. We got seventy five lakes. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. seventy five. That's all we got. I guess y'all just not having fun. I, I guess it's on me. Y'all not having a good time. <clears throat> it's not good content. You're like, yeah, we, yeah, we ain't about it. Listen, do me a favor. Let's get those likes up. I would appreciate it. I would really appreciate it. Uh, yeah, I saw that. I saw that. Doom time, yes sir. Um, okay, so we talked about Blade. 
and I'm very excited for Blade. Um, Agatha. Okay, we're gonna make this one quick because I'm gonna spend a little bit more time on this, and we're gonna wrap up with the Phase Six, and then get into uh, a Black Panther. Reasons being excited for Agatha. Number one, Catherine Hahn is great. Number two, Agatha Harkness, really great character. And I'm very intrigued to see like her. So like, is her show a prequel? Because again, the name of the show is uh, Agatha Coven of Chaos. We saw her backstory or at least a little bit of her backstory in WandaVision. So are we going to get more of her origins, more of the, um, let's say the Book of the Damned, but the, uh, what was the name of the book? That they destroyed um, the evil book. Jesus, I can't think of the name of it. But that book, are we going to get origins of that? And also the origins of the uh, the creator of that book, <clears throat> um, Kathan or something like that. Or is it going to be a continuation of the story? Because if we are to believe Multiverse of Madness, when she collapsed the, the tomb, she died. She'll be back. But she died. When that happened, did that break the spell that she had on Agatha in Westview? And now Agatha, chaos, coven of chaos, she's she's out for blood. Well, not out for blood, but she's like, I'm free now. Let me roam the streets of the world of the MCU and all that stuff. So is it a prequel? Is it a follow up? Is it both? Um, but also, like, again, she's a witch. Which is playing supernatural. What other characters have Agatha come across in her century of being alive or so? So she probably knows Blade, you know, she probably knows Dracula, she probably knows Werewolf by Night, she probably has, you know, come across other supernatural beings of the MCU. Um, so I, again, I'm very intrigued to see what they do with that. Because again, Catherine Hahn, she can do comedy, as we know, but she can also do drama. Um, and she she's great. So I'm really excited to see what they do with that show. I know a lot of people, it's not a high on a lot of people's list, but I'm here for it. Um, and make it come out. I don't know if is there is there a did they put a date on it? It's that one um okay, winter or okay, yeah. So 2023, 2024. Okay, so I was hoping for like October spooky vibes, but we'll see with that. Let me know if y'all are excited for Agatha. Like I said, I know everyone's not excited for it, but for the reason I just mentioned, that's why I'm looking forward to it. But <clears throat> what I am excited for is that damn daredevil. Listen here, man. I am, I'm a fan, uh, to say the least, of what Matt, you know, Matt Murdock's story, what they did with Netflix, um, and 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 that that whole narrative, um, which is just before. Um, I would say for me, Daredevil, all three seasons, by the way, is top live action top three comic book shows that I've ever seen. Uh, the Boys is up there. That is up there. Um, yeah, it, it's 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 one of the best comic book shows of all time in my eyes. Uh, performances, um, you talk about blood, <laughs> gritty, uh, you know, Kingpin, Vincent D'Onofrio. Uh, the supporting cast was strong. Um, season two is my favorite, though. The introduction of Punisher, the whole back and forth and their the, the the confliction of ideologies that him and, and Matt went against, kill to not to kill. Um, Electra was great in that season. You know, again, Vincent was great. And then obviously um ending season three with uh Bullseye and all that, man. Oh, it's such a great show. It's it my only issue that I had with, with Daredevil is like a little small nitpick. Every season was, and this is funny, that this new season will be 18 episodes. My biggest issue with the three seasons of Daredevil, they were always 13 seasons long. And the format of that 13 season, there was like always for me, every season, there was almost too many episodes. Like it felt like it was filler episodes. Like it wasn't a lot of them. Like I would say every season had like two filler episodes at max, right? Which is fine. TV, long form, con con or long form television like that. Sometimes you're going to get those shows, right? Some of, those <clears throat> some of those episodes that don't really add up to anything and just kind of... Just giving you something, right? <clears throat> so with all that being said, that's my only gripe. Um, but with that being said, the announcement is that Daredevil, Born Again, which is his one of his best, most iconic, most recognizable storylines, will be the adaptation that they're giving us. Um, we don't know if everyone else is coming back um, as far as the... Um, 
you know, Karen and Foggy and, and you know, those actors, I'm assuming those characters are coming back, but we don't know if those actors are coming back to reply, to, to come back, and, you know, and reprise their role. Uh, and let me share the screen here with you all. So again, they did announce it's 18 episode long series. Now, I wonder if they're going to split that into two, season one, season two, and make it nine episodes. They don't say that here. It says that, you know, Daredevil Born Again, an 18 episode series. Well, I guess they don't say, that's not saying season, they're saying series. So it could be season one and two and together collectively, or I don't know, maybe they split it up in three and they cut it into six again, but neither here nor there. I don't want to look too much to that. It's They're saying 18 episode series. So I'm just going to take it for face value and say it's the first season will be 18 episodes. And that's spring of 2024. Uh, and we know, obviously, Charlie Cox is back in the role from his time uh, in the role coming back from Spider-Man. And then also Vincent Narfio will be back. Um, so that's exciting, man. Um, and then again, we talked about it earlier. This will be kind of a... The best of both worlds. We're going to get some of the um, characteristics, some of the understanding of his story that came from Netflix, but obviously putting on the 616 version of the character. Um, like how many times has him and Kingpin come across each other? How many times has he come across other Avengers within the MCU? He met Spider-Man, but has he, you know, met a Iron Man at one point? Has he met, uh, you know, a, a Hawkeye? Want, you know, Natasha Romanoff. So it was very intriguing to see Matt's, 616 Matt's, like his perspective of the world living within now the confines or living now, not the confines, but living within the world of Avengers 1, Age of Ultron, Civil War, Infinity War. Was he blipped? Was he not blipped? You know, things of that nature is going to be really interesting to see how that adds more to the character within the confines of, again, the MCU, right? So I'm very, very, very excited for that. And again, the big thing is 18 episode. Thank you, Disney, for hearing us. Stop with the six episode nonsense. It's ridiculous. You can't flesh a story out. Every show can't just be a preview for the movie. You got to flesh these. Like the way they, they make their shows is, is like they're making movies. That's not how you make shows. You make shows to make TV shows, long form content, developing the characters, developing, fleshing out the storyline. So that, so I'm glad that they're now breaking that mold uh, and, and they're doing it with. Well, they're not. They did it. They did it with WandaVision, obviously, with nine episodes. And then everything else preceding that was six episodes. And now She-Hulk is nine episodes. And now it seems that they're going to be playing with that. I wish I wish Secret Invasion was 18 episodes long, but we'll see. But anyway, I am very very excited for this show to be announced um, because when they announced that he was coming back, that was one of my gripes. I'm like, oh, I'm excited, but we all know it's going to be six episodes, but now we know it's going to be 18, uh, which is dope. So let me see what y'all are saying about Agatha. How y'all feeling about uh, Matt Murdock and getting 18? And again, are these 30 minutes? Are these 45 minutes? Are these an hour long? Because that's if they were an hour long on Netflix. So I can do the same thing. I guess time will tell. Uh, all right. So let's see if we got any Agatha fans in here. What Coop said, Agatha probably had a spell broken uh, or the result. Yeah, that's, see, man, that's what I'm saying. Y'all, we on the same page here, okay? And I appreciate y'all. Um, Shiri, uh, we'll meet. Oh, yeah, we'll get to you. Yeah, yeah, we, right, we, we almost there, man. We are almost there. We're going to talk about Black Panther here. We're going to wrap up the stream with Black Panther. <clears throat> Which is, say, hey, man, we'll see, we'll see. Um. Agatha show can give us history. Exactly, Coop. Exactly. That's what I said. It can be a prequel and a sequel all in one. Um, I mean, she's dealing with mythical stuff. What does Wong feel about that? You know, he's a source of supreme. What is that? Has she met in the ancient one before? So, it's, yeah, it's a lot of possibilities. It's a lot of possibilities. <clears throat> I'm not sure. I, I never watched. I, I have to look her up. Um. To see, uh, to see what she looked like. I, I, hey, like I said, I'm a supernatural horror fan, so yes, sir. Uh, we got some Daredevil fans in here. Um, I like witches and magic, but I need a trailer. No, respectable, respect. I understand. Ah, I agree. I agree. Um, Foggy actors coming. Out. Oh, is that? I didn't know that. That's what's up. That's breaking news to me. That's great. I can't think of the actor's name, but I liked him in the role. And I hope Karen comes back. Deborah, something, something, something. Uh, I hope she comes back too. I think Daredevil Born Again is the best show. It, it, it could be. 
it might be probably will be <laughs> okay so okay 18 episode sweet <gasps> Ooh -wee. listen 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 if you got some time uh like i said the three seasons it's on netflix 13 episodes long you won't be disappointed you won't be disappointed i hope they bring some writers back I, oh did i they what are they working on let me backtrack a little bit to Echo. It was confirmed that the writers for Daredevil are writing Echo. So if there is if there is a light in the tunnel, um, the writers from Daredevil will be working on Echo. And I don't know if I would imagine they're like, hey, Kevin, um, Daredevil, 18 episodes, you know, we might know a thing or two about that character. I would like, I mean, I would like to obviously maybe bring in some new writers with the old writers and bring us something new. So we'll see. Um, ba, 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 ba. let's see here. Um, I just read up on Born Again stories even more. Yeah, it's I, I've I, I never finished the story. Uh, this is when I was kind of like in between my you know, I used to read a lot of comics when I was younger, but then as I got older and bills and life and girlfriends and all that stuff, I kind of put comics away. But from what I remember from it, and from what I know from people that are like steeped in comic book, you know, all that stuff. This is one of this, from what I've heard, this is his best comic book run. There's a lot of great Daredevil stories, but I hear this is the one. Which, speaking of Daredevil, where was that article that I had? Or that quote that I had here? Yeah, it is right here. Right here, right here, right here. Kevin Feige <clears throat> has teased Daredevil and Spider Man's future as a street level heroes. We've got street level heroes. With our announcement of Daredevil. And of course, Spidey going into street level heroes. So listen, if y'all used to watch a cartoon back in the day, Daredevil and Spidey working together. Oh, yeah. And also, too, for again, if y'all watched or saw my little short on the announcements of the animation shows, the new Spider-Man animated show, Spider-Man freshman year, Daredevil will be in that series. So listen. Daredevil all day, every day. He's going to be in Spider-Man animated series. He's going to be in She-Hulk. He's going to be in Echo. He's going to have his own series. He's going to obviously be in the films. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Daredevil. Yeah, where y'all Daredevil fans at? We're going to get a lot of Daredevil, <laughs> which I'm here for. Um, okay. So let's move on on to, okay, what's next on the uh, the docket? And then we'll, we'll talk some Black Panther. Oh, we'll talk phase six, and then we'll finish up with Black Panther. We'll, we'll wrap up at the two-hour mark. Um, Captain America, I talked about it yesterday. I'm uh, so happy to be wearing the shirt here, representing Cap. Um, and I'm going to combine these two. Captain America and Thunderbolts will literally be a part one, part two in my eyes. And what I mean by that is whatever the ramifications, whatever happens in his film will lead directly into uh, Thunderbolts, which I believe, let me go ahead and pull this up, it's literally like months from each other. Yeah. Zoom in here. Yep. So Captain America 4 or Captain America New World New World Order, <clears throat> May 3rd, and then literally two months, Thunderbolts. Now, <clears throat> rumor is Bucky's going to be a part of the group. Yelena's going to be a part of the group. Ghost is going to be a part of the group. Abomination is going to be a part of the group. Um, uh, U.S. agent, John Walker. Uh, and was there anyone else? I think that was it. And then, of course, them being led by <clears throat> um, uh, Val, Valentina. Um, now, as far as what I can imagine this story is going to be for, for people that aren't too familiar with Thunderbolts, it's kind of like a suicide squad-ish type of team. Um, you know, we got to get the stuff done, and maybe you got to get stuff done that the Avengers aren't willing to do as far as like kind of the more – you know, again, if we're talking about Bucky, Yelena, you know, I think Taskmaster even, which I hope they figure that out because I wasn't a fan of Black Widow and particularly Taskmaster. People that have killed, right? People that have killed and aren't, aren't afraid to kill, um, which if Bucky is a part of the group, that's going to be weird because, again, if you saw Falcon and Winter Soldier, he's kind of reverted back to, I don't want to do that anymore. I don't want to go back to train you know that whole you know what his mantra to get him back in that mindset so it'll be interesting if bucky is to to be a part of that crew um but i i'm 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 intrigued by the thunderbolts uh again what's the threat right so again if my, if my theory is to be true as far as captain america who is he going against and, and i totally forgot 
again, comic book wise, and this not even putting the comic books aside, Zemo. Zemo is a very pivotal character in the Captain America story, and we know he's still out there. He's still well, he was uh, you know obtained by the Dora Milaje, but I would imagine after it gets flooded with Black Panther and Namor coming through, that he, that that might be his way of getting out of Wakanda, right? Um, but Zemo is he? I'm just trying to think. Sam Wilson, number one, he's gonna have to. The, the storyline has to be, and I don't care what people say about well, Disney's woke and this is woke. Captain America and politics are, that's like ingrained in his DNA. I mean, like I said, if you read the comics, he's fought Nazis, he's fought against racism. It's part of Captain America's, stick, uh, you know, his spiel. That's his thing. He fights for people, for the voiceless, of essentially. So a black man having the mantle, we, we hinted at it in the show, but I think the movie is going to really kind of shine a light on that. And again, some people will be like, oh, here's Disney. Being, no, it's, it's part of the character. Um, but so we have that angle. But who is he going to be going against, man? Uh, and again, the Captain America lore, as far as his rogues gallery, isn't that great. So I wouldn't be surprised if they end up giving uh, Sam or you know Captain America like some adversary that comes from someone else's lore. Um, and I, I'm just trying to think what threat level, because again, you got to keep in mind, Sam, no disrespect, Sam, uh, you, you got the shield. You're Captain America. He ain't a super soldier. So whoever he goes against is going to have to be intellectually, like on a Zemo level, like they can probably fight, but they're not going to be, you know, Bucky, you know, uh, uh, Steve Rogers. They, I mean, they could, but it's like, come on, man. I, I, it's it's going to be hard for me to believe uh, that he's going toe to toe. We saw how Bucky tossed him in Winter so or uh, Civil War. Um, and obviously he's going to probably have Bucky for, you know, on his side. And I think there's going to be maybe – I think Sam is going to wrangle up the Young Avengers, if I'm being honest with you. I think he's going to put his own team together, the Avengers, in the form of Young Avengers, right? Kate Bishop and Patriot and uh, Casey Lang and all that different stuff. But I'm just trying to think of a threat level for Sam. To, oops, he's going to fight racism. <laughs> That's going to be the film. He is going to fight and defeat racism. No, um, I, I'm just really curious on what the main adversary is going to be um, in that film. But I'm here for it. And then again, what are the Thunderbolts going after? You know, if you gather this team, there has to be some type of big bad. Um, again, I would imagine, you know, William Hurt, who passed away, you know, if if Thunderbolts, you know, Thunderbolt Ross, you know, he was supposed to probably play into that story. So what is their threat level going to be? Again, I don't think we're going to get Doom this early. Um, so I'm very intrigued to see what they do there. Let me know in the chat. Let me let me pull you guys because y'all help me out. What What is Captain America... New World Order, what do you think is going to be the main adversary and the, kind of the main threat at hand, and what storyline would you like to see? And then also, how does that tie into Thunderbolts, and what, what do we expect for Thunderbolts? Let me see what y'all are thinking about there. Um, all right, let's see. All right, so Sam Wilson got to fight all the people's damn. Yeah, I mean, he's going to be there. He's going to earn that shield. He's going to earn that title, Captain America. Oh, Thunderbolts. Yeah, Thunderbolts is is, is, is official. It's, it's here. It's coming. It's being adapted. The Rick, remember? Remember one? Oh, okay. Dealing with the, oh, the Serpent, which was a title, which was the title for uh, Civil War before it came out. Uh, and I'm not too familiar with the Serpent Society. Um, what are they like? I don't know. What Are they, are they like uh, Hydra of a sense? And like they do... Like stuff behind the scenes, taking down governments and countries. Uh, fill me in, Justin. Let me know what the Serbian, uh, Serpent uh, Society, sorry, Serpent Society is all about. Yeah, we'll see. <clears throat> yeah, there's a lot of, I mean, Sokovia Accords, uh, She Hulk, and this new court of law about superheroes and damage control, and, and I mean, literally damage control and Captain or Miss Marvel. Um, so yeah, I'm really intrigued to see the, the political side of the MCU, right? Because that stuff matters. They've established that with Civil War, um, that the laws and how people feel about heroes is, is a pivotal story. Um, so yeah. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, they didn't they didn't like each other. Uh, yeah, I mean that'll be that'll be pretty cool. Again, I'm I'm, I'm unless uh, Anthony, I hope he do it, does his thing. Because I'll be I'll be honest, y'all. I'm gonna be hundred percent honest with you all. Let's keep it a buck. 
it is going to be very hard for me to not think of Steve Rogers, Chris Evans. Like he's my favorite Avenger. He was the uh, uh, the definition of a hero to me. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm really excited to see Sam's version of that character and and not like copy paste but i'm excited to see what sam can offer but again when i see captain america when i see the shield i think steve rogers so and hey let me know in the chat where is steve he's an old man he's on the moon (laughs) is he gonna pop up i mean and i don't don't, it's so hard man because if you bring him up that obviously is gonna hurt people like me like oh there he is there's steve and you can't get him out of your head if he's on screen so I'm, i'm i'm intrigued to see if steve rogers plays a part into this narrative. Um, Sam's ring is going to be some heavy. <laughs> he going to need it, especially if it's a, a, a super soldier or a, 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 a I would say meta human. That's more a DC, but a, a super villain or whatever the case may be, man. Uh, uh, we'll see. Didn't have super. Even the first cap didn't have a super strong villain. Uh, what are you saying? Like, as far as narratively speaking, because he, uh, um, we'll say Zemo, um, my man Hugo Weaven as uh, Red Skull, he he was a super soldier. I mean, so he he can he could strength wise he can go toe to toe with Captain America. But if you're referring to just like it didn't impact you like a good villain, I would disagree. I think First Avenger is very underrated, and I actually liked uh, Red Skull a lot. And wish they didn't kill him off. Um, but we all know how that character. Which, speaking of Red Skull, I mean, the uh, Soul Stone was destroyed is he released of his uh duties of protecting the keeper of the soul scone like is red skull gonna uh, i don't know i don't know i'm just i'm, I'm just in my head now <clears throat> oh man imagine as they yeah like a nick Fury, that would be pretty dope uh uh yeah isaiah was great and again his uh grandson patriot um uh, isaiah you know iron patriot you know and Sam, I'm gonna need you to teach my boy how to be a hero, man. Because you know, uh, I'm trying to remember. I know in the comics, <sighs> Iron Patriot obtained his super cho- super soldier abilities because he volunteered to be a part of a program where they injected the super soldier serum. So I wonder if they're gonna say like it passed down from a generation. Like obviously Isaiah was tested on, um, and his blood. You know, obviously generations later, it now. You know, his uh, um, Eli, I'm sorry, Eli is going to now have the abilities of a super soldier. I don't know if that's something they're going to play into uh, or if the super soldier serum is some here, some way, some way uh, out there in the streets. And, you know, I don't know. It's, it's going to be interesting. Sam's got to stop the stop by Wakanda and get all his up, which Rebecca, there is rumors um, and particularly Sam or not Sam, but Anthony Mackie was on a red carpet event for something. And then they have brought up, you know, Wakanda forever. And he like the way he talked about it, he didn't say it explicitly, but he almost slipped up, it, slipped up and made it seem like we're going to see him in Wakanda forever. Uh, whether that's upgrades, whether that's hearing about the Wakanda uh, war, um, he is captain. And what is Sam? Sam went to, you know, to, to well, we'll talk about T'Challa here in a second. But, you know, there's a there's a, a bond and an understanding between Captain America and Wakandan. So, I mean, we'll, we'll see. He might pay a visit. Yeah, that's interesting. You know, at the end of the day, he might struggle with that. Like, man, I can't be out here. <laughs> I can't hang with these these villains, man. I'm going to need to juice up. Uh, or I'm, I don't need it. I don't want it. You know, that's going to be a struggle for him because that, that was something that they implied in uh, winners or in, in the show. Um, so that's something to tackle with, man. Do I do I enhance myself to even the playing field? That's interesting. That's very, very interesting. Do you think somehow he gets injected? Yeah, that could be. Maybe it's forced upon him. Right. Um, yeah. And, and my man's uh, Torres. Right. Um, the, the, the soldier that helped him out. I know that he, in the comics, he takes on the Falcon, uh, mantle. So is he going to play a part? It's, you know, some interesting stuff. What up, Mo? How we doing? How are we doing? Hope you're doing well. Uh, you know, a little inside joke. I'm staying hydrated. If you're still here, Mo, um, and in your boy, he's chilling. So yeah, shout out to Mo. Uh, Sam will go after. Sh- Why'd you have to bring up Sharon Carter? Why'd you have to bring up Sharon Carter and the damn power broker? And now you got me thinking about them damn flag smashers. Bottom of the barrel. (laughs) The worst of the worst. 
Yeah, I forgot about Sharon Carter. Let me. So my theory was Sharon Carter as the power broker is working for someone else. When she's on the phone, again, going back to the bigger picture, weapons on the streets, um, 10 rings, they're still out there. Don't forget about 10 rings. They have their own infrastructure. Who does she talk to? Who does she make her, you know, who who do they, are they in connections with someone? Mm -hmm. I think Sharon Carter and the power broker are tied to someone bigger and badder, more menacing, a la doom. Again, these are just the seeds being planted. It could be someone else entirely, right? That's just, you know, the working theory. But I think Power Broker and, and Sharon Carter will have a, a plot uh, in this story for sure because she's, she's part of the Lord, she's part of the universe and all that stuff. Man, Ryan, we're going to get into it. I've been saying it, Ryan. We're going to get to it here in a second, my friend. We're going to talk about T'Challa in, in that whole world in a second. I'm the New World Order. Um, for sure. That's funny, right? I don't think is it a coincidence? I don't know, Coop. You tell me. <clears throat> um, I think the threat might be different governments coming together to form a new world order. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. I like that idea for sure. Uh, no, Steve, please. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Red School was killed in the first film. Uh, that's what I meant. Oh, okay. I got you. Yep. Totally got you. I understand. I, and I agree with you. I don't think they should have killed them all. I mean, well, he's not dead. Is he? He's. He's relieved of his duties. So, yeah. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Yeah, we'll get into that here. Uh, all right. What did we just talk about? Um, Captain America, Thunderbolts. All right. Let's talk about phase six, and then we'll talk, we'll finish off with uh, Black Panther. Man. Phase six. Phase six. Okay. So listen, let me move this out the way. Phase six is looking like the uh, like the uh, uh, OP level of of uh, of uh, Marvel. This is God tier. This is like on another level, man. So phase four kicks off with the first family of Marvel, which is Fantastic Four, which I think we're gonna see them before their film as i you know go back in the replay i think we might get one or two fantastic four members in ant-man uh and that might not be the only time we see them but to know that we're starting phase six off with them is very exciting and i do think coming september 9th if i'm not mistaken uh d23 i think they're gonna give us the full cast all four of them i know there's rumors of Jason Segel as the thing, uh, Joe Curry from Stranger Things as uh, Johnny Stone or Johnny uh, Blaze. Um, uh, ba -ba -ba. Johnny Storm wasn't Johnny Blaze. I'm thinking of uh, Ghost Rider. Um, who did they say? Amanda Seyfried as um, Sue. I've seen a couple different castings for that. Uh, and then, you know, who's going to play Reed, right? My man's from you. Um, there's, there's a lot of rumors out there. Obviously, John Krasinski's still on the table. Emily Blunt's still on the table. Uh, whoever they choose, I'm I'm here for it. Um, I'm excited for for Fantastic Four, but what I'm more excited about is please, Kevin, please, Kevin, please do these characters right. <laughs> no disrespect to Tim's stories uh, and his two films, and then obviously, um, Jesus, the fan four stick with uh, my man's from uh, ah man. I came through that director's name. That that was just a that that film was was miserable. It was miserable. Um, but anyway, I'm just excited to see the the first family done right, um, and and to see where have you been, right? Or have they been trapped in the quantum realm? Have they been stuck in the negative zone? Um, you know, are they from the '60s and they've been trapped in the '60s via the the quantum realm via the 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 you know, um negative zone is that going to tie into ant-man again right there's so many possibilities with the fantastic four um you know and i'm excited for it i'm here for it i'm, I'm very intrigued to dive deeper into that side of the marvel cinematic universe galactus uh you know silver 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 surfer the back the backs and the cat all that stuff man it's it's very very exciting uh to see them and then like i said i do feel as though and then of course doom you know that's that's, that's the obvious but i do think we're going to get fantastic for at least one or two of those members before we get their actual film but the fact that they're starting to slate off is very exciting uh 
And then we talked about it, man. Let me go ahead and pull up that article. And some of y'all already mentioned it as far as expectations and theories. And um, you know, what are those, what are those empty slots on that on the on the screen here? Um, so there's been some suggestions out there. Uh, let me share the screen for some of the ideas. And, and some of you all were right on the money as far as your thoughts on that. And I, I totally agree with you all in regards to um what some of those empty slots could be. So uh, the Marvel Hub, and like I said, some of you all already hit the nail on the head. Theories being uh, a big obvious Eternals too. Which hey, I'm a, let me let me put the screen on me for two seconds. <laughs> let me move this out the way. I will die on the hill. That Eternals is a fantastic film. I know it's not for everyone. I know it's maybe a little bit too long in the tooth. This, that, and the other. There's you know people have their gripes with the film. I respect you. But I'm just telling you, I think the film is great. That's all I'll say about that. So getting back into it all, uh, Eternals 2. Um, you know, we got to remember Erisham, the judge. Who's He's going to judge the world. We, we, we got that to worry about, right? Celestials are still out there. Deadpool 3 makes sense, right? Um, we know that they already got that working. I'm here for it. Young Avengers, they've been building that seed since, uh, hell, WandaVision with the two boys, the twins, Billy and Tommy, Wicked and Speed. I mean, so they've been building that for a year now. Uh, Doctor Strange 3, um, yeah, that makes sense three years from now. Yeah, I can see Doctor Strange 3 being in that equation. We obviously know Spider-Man after making a bazillion dollars at the box office. People want more Spider-Man, and I want more Spider-Man of the Spider-Man that ended Spider-Man No Way Home, adult Peter. Paying bills, Peter. Struggling, Peter. Not giving him, not giving things, Peter. I'm here for that. Um, Miss Marvel season two. Okay, that makes sense. And it, and it seems like that show has more room for multiple seasons. So I'm here for it. And then, of course, the X Men, or as they say, the rumor is they're going to call it mutants, the mutants. So that might fill out that slot of those films that are, haven't been uh, slated or haven't been announced. Let me zoom in on those those empty slots there. So. How y'all feel about that? Is there any validity, any any uh, um, you know agreeance there that you all think that those those empty slots will be filled by those films? And of course, you know those two summer man, whatever these two pro and, and keep in mind too, um, you know these don't all have to be movies; they can be shows and movies, a mixture of both. Um, but you know, while all that's setting up, let's talk about this. Um, I already y'all saw the stream earlier. I talked about my excitement of Kang. But when you say the Kang dynasty, as a sports fan, when I think of dynasty, I think of long-standing, consistent excellence. I think of, you know, the Bulls in the 90s. I think of um the Yankees in the 90s and 2000s. I think of the Lakers in the early 2000s. I think of the 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 uh uh the San Antonio Spurs in the mid 2000s. And I think of right now what we're living in. Again, I'm a big basketball fan, the Warriors. Consistency over a long period of time building to the word to justify dynasty. So Kang Dynasty means that, and again, we already know he's woven into the narrative. He came in Loki. He's coming in Ant-Man. He is then jumping to this. So I'm assuming that that word Dynasty means that, and again, going back to when we talked about the time or the the, the footage they showed in Ant-Man and the Quantumanium, he's been doing this for a long time. We just haven't seen it, right? He's been doing all this stuff mucking up the multiverse, mucking up worlds, you know, destroying timelines, adding timelines, conquering the worlds and worlds and universes and, and stuff like that. So he's been doing this this whole time, which makes me think that we thought that Thanos, you know, who is and the Russo brothers have come out and said, which, by the way, let me just put this out there. The Russo brothers have Kevin Feige has said the Russo brothers will not be attached to any of these products, by the way, which makes me think that they will be probably doing something X-Men related. Kind of disappointing, but I'm fine. I'm, I'm very excited to see who they announced. Maybe the D23. Um, you know, I can't even think of a director right now or directors to direct these two gigantic films. But going back to Dan, uh, King Dynasty, I think number one, Ant Man is going to do some obviously some lead work. We're going to have to do some exposition to show who Kang is. We we know who the one who remains. He gave us that. Uh, that beautiful monologue, uh, but we still have to learn who Kang is. Why does Kang deserve a subtitle in an Avengers film? 
So I think that this Kang Dynasty will be a his movie. It will really like dedicate. Obviously, it's going to be, if I'm being honest with you all, just looking at the timeline and going back to my Captain America, he is going to re bring in the Avengers, the new, maybe young Avengers. And I think Kang Dynasty will be young Avengers versus Kang with Cap and Cassie and uh, Iron Iron Patriot, uh, you know, uh, uh, Hawkeye, uh, Kate Bishop, uh, Yelena, all those younger generations. They're going to get them. They're going to get their ass whooped. They're going to get their ass handed to them. We will see the Avengers lose again. It's not, you know, oh, we saw that. Thing. No, in the Avengers, they lose a lot in the comics. So it's it's part of course. I think Kang will conquer the 616, right? In doing so, we need help, you know? And, and again, we need help in the form of Fantastic Four. Maybe some mutants. Maybe some OG characters, right? From the previous Marvel Cinema. I'm talking Thor. Hopefully by then, the Hulk, his developmental lead in, in Disney+. Plus, He's beefed himself up. He's ready to smash some stuff. We're going to need some help. Because Secret Wars... There's an incursion. There's another universe trying to take over the 616 due to the fact that Kang has conquered, has completed, you know, his conquering. So we're going to see this huge montage of just Avengers fighting Avengers. Some of the storylines from Secret Invasion with Scrolls and Kree and Captain Marvel, Nova, uh, Silver Surfer. I don't think y'all realize how huge and, and again, I'm saying mutants. We might not even get mutants. I'm going to be honest with you all. Um, in phase six, that might be a phase seven, which, by the way, let me go ahead and play the clip now. Uh, Kevin Feige uh, even kind of jokingly said that. Uh, let me see if I got that clip here. Uh, where was it? He he said, like, I we they're coming, you know, but it doesn't seem like they might be coming anytime soon uh, in any of these phases. Uh do you ever think, like, I could have sworn I had saved the damn video, but it alone, it's got to be in here. Anyway, yep, here it is, here it is. Oh, this was, okay, I already mentioned this, that he said the Russo brothers, let me just go ahead and play it for y'all. So this is Kevin Feige addressing, will the Russo brothers be a part of these Avengers films? Let me know if y'all can hear this, by the way. Not connected to it, they, they, uh, they uh, have been, I think, very direct about that. I think they were, we love them, they love us, we want to find something to do together, uh, but it's not this. Not connected to it. They've, they uh, they uh, have been, I think, very direct about that. I think they were, we love them. They love us. We want to find something to do together. Um, it's not so Kevin Feige has said, and the Russo brothers have even said so themselves, that, um, <clears throat> you know, yeah, we love Secret Debate, but that doesn't mean they're going to do it. And Kevin Feige said they're not. I thought I had another clip. But either way, I was going to say that um, as far as the X-Men go, X-Men are coming, but it might not be anytime soon. So we might not have X-Men in phase uh, five or six. It might be, hell, it might be phase 10, <laughs> right? I mean, X would be kind of cool. Um, but anyway, phase six will be lit. Phase six will be very crazy. Now, I said it last night, and I, and I kind of stand by this. I, from a business perspective, man, I don't think you can have two Avengers movies come out. I mean, they can do whatever the hell they want, right? But as far as just thinking of it, in a financial sense, um, let me bring up this. I mean, come on. Literally, we're talking from May to November. That's six months, bro. Almost less than six months. And then two movies or shows in between that. You're going to want to spread that wealth. You're going to want to, you're going to really want to milk that whatever Kang taking on the Avengers, defeating the Avengers, the young Avengers are too young. They don't know what they're doing. Um, and then obviously coming together for Secret Wars. Um, I think they're going to push. I'm being honest. I think they're gonna push Secret Wars back, man, and let it breathe, right? They're gonna let it let it have some moments. Again, I could be completely wrong. They're gonna stick to the script, uh, and these films will come out within six months. But I don't think they will. I do not think they will. I think that Secret Wars will probably be pushed back to twenty. What is that? Twenty twenty five. Um, twenty twenty six. I'm sorry. So yeah, next. So and yeah, and it's November. It's almost the end of the year anyway. Um, and. I'm trying to remember the whole Avatar Star Wars schedule because it's like every other year Star Wars was coming out and Avatar was coming out and now, you know, obviously the Avengers. So the film's coming out late 2025. So why not just push it to the, I mean, again, I know we're going to be biting at the bits for it, but why not just push it back? 
right, to the early spring of 2026. Again, yes, am I saying, Elliot, you don't want to see two Avengers in one year? Hell yeah, I want to see two Avengers in one year. But I'm just thinking, again, let stuff breathe. Let the, the, let the stakes be had within one film and then let people kind of digest it. Let them think about it. Think about, again, think about Infinity War and waiting a whole year for Endgame and the excitement and the buildup and the theories and the conversations and just sitting with the idea. We knew the Avengers were coming back, right? But then sitting with that idea and being in your head for that year and then building to Endgame, which ended up being the biggest film ever before Avatar overtook it again. So that's all I'm saying. Just let it breathe. Just let it breathe. Um, and with that said, let me breathe and let me switch over to y'all comments because we've been on our soapbox here. And then we got another soapbox to get on because we're going to wrap things up talking about um, the Black Panther. Um, OK, so let me catch up to the to the to the comments here. And see how y'all feel. Um, OK, and again, we got 114, 109 now in the chat. Thank you for tuning in. We're, we're going on two hours. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The love, the support, the thumbs up, the comments. Y'all are awesome. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Give the video a thumbs up if, you, if, you, if you're appreciating this conversation, having fun in the chat. Share the video and, and continue to have the comments going in the chat. I appreciate y'all. So um, I'm just catching up here. Yep, we just did. I hope you enjoyed it. We just talked about phase six. <laughs> Again, I'm, I'm behind, <clears throat> excuse me, behind in the chat, so I'm catching up. Second project. Fantastic Four is the second project. Uh, no, it's the first project. We just saw that on the screen. Uh, yeah, I saw you say that earlier. I'm going to have to look for it. Josh Trank, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Eric. Um, yeah. Do you think we would get a Ghost Rider film in Phase 6? Um, Either that or Midnight Suns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we're going to have Blade by then and Moon Knight. So, and also Moon Knight. Is, is there a season two? Is there a, a, a movie Moon Knight? Um, you know, what's the possibilities there? Uh, do, 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 do. In one that they mentioned front fences for, did they? I don't remember that. Oh, you're talking about uh, um, the line in which Maria Monica was talking to Hayward and she said, or he said there was a space program and there were astronauts that were lost during the blip. Um, Interesting. Thor, can you stop? Get off of that, dude. What are you doing? Um, yeah, they did. I mean, and, and that was never verified, but that, yeah, because remember the whole, my physicist friend and everyone thinking it was Blue Beetle or thinking it was Reed Richards and it turned out to be just a, a soldier. Um, but yeah. Um, thank you, Coop. Thank you, bro. I hope I'm not alone in that. Yeah, I hope I'm not alone in that. Eternals. Did I say Yes. Yes, Eternals. I love it. I love me some Eternals. Shang-Chi, yep. I, I'm looking forward to that sequel. And I want even more hand-to-hand -hand combat. I want more action. Give me more. Because Shang-Chi's about that action. Um, so a lot of y'all think it's the heat. He didn't mean Eternals. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Him and Frank uh, 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 Coppola from the, uh, the Godfather films. They're going to be directing. Uh, Coppola's going to be directing Kang because um, it sounds like a, you know, Kang sounds like a. No, I'm sorry. Martin, Scor Martin Scorsese is going to do Kang because it's going to be like, I'm a, I'm, I'm a gangster. You know, he does those gangster films, Goodfellas, uh, you know, uh, Casino. And then Coppola is going to do The Godfather, right? Uh, Alpha, you can't refuse. So that's that's the combo right there. <laughs> It's funny. Y'all ain't ready for Kang Kong. Yeah, man. It's it's so much Kang stuff that I, I can't even control myself. It's Kang Kang Gang. Um, a couple of postcards seen similar to Thanos. Yeah, 2025 is crazy. All right. Uh so y'all excited. Yeah, y'all excited. Don't push back. Hey, I'm telling it's just let it breathe. Let the consequences have some stakes and let us be in our in our feelings for a bit. More than six months, you know? No avatar. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Um, and there's no Star Wars? Because by then, I mean, you know, the Tycom film and the, um, all that stuff. So, I mean, yeah, if the, the vacancy is there, we'll see. We'll see. Um, all right. So let me, all right. I think y'all are saying some great stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm just uh, looking over some of y'all comments here. Okay. <sighs> okay. So we talked about it last night. Um, 
and I rewatched the trailer multiple times um, at this point. And um, as I said last night, and I'll say it again now, let's let's pivot over. Let's talk about Black Panther trailer, uh, uh, Wakanda Forever. Um, some thoughts. Uh, first off, let me play y'all a little clip here. Um, let me share the screen with y'all right quick. This is a uh, Okoye uh, and Riri Williams it's having an interview. Uh, let me unmute this here. Everything of this is obviously. I know you guys talked about it. So this panel. is just. Uh, it was five years. Denny Guerrero talking about um, just kind of how she how she feels and, and kind of the process and, and the grief and all that stuff. So let's let's go ahead and play that. Years ago that you were here with the first footage with Chadwick, we got a chance to see that beautiful mural in the footage. Obviously, it is this whole everything of this is is a tribute to him. What did it mean to to kind of have this moment all together to pay tribute, both with you all as a cast and also with the fans? I mean, it was it was very um, it was it was everything really. I mean, we 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 didn't know when and how it was gonna hit us, you know. Various it hit us various ways in various moments. Sometimes about just walking onto the stage and hearing Ryan talk before that, we were getting hit like watching it like leaving. And there are various moments where you're just being hit by that. And I think it was beautifully said by Dominic and by Michaela that they really were support for us. There was a very hard day I had on set. And um, she was there for me. And, um, you know, they're just, you just never knew when it was just going to be a really hard day. And so um, they were really amazing, the, our new family. They understood they were in a place where grief was happening. And they really, really, they, they held us up. So we got a great new family. <laughs> you know, man, it's... Um... It's, it's such a, 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 a interesting situation at hand because I'm going to be 100% honest with you all right now as far as just how I feel about this whole situation. That's, uh, uh, I'm 100% behind. And shout out to E-Man Movie Reviews. I got a, a little bit of his stream last night. He was on live for like three hours, man, and just doing his damn thing. E-Man, if y'all, I'm pretty sure y'all y'all know who E-Man is. If you don't, where you been at? E-Man Movie Reviews, Emmanuel, uh, check him out. He started a petition, uh, man, uh, probably 18 months ago with the whole – Hashtag recast a child up. And I know a lot of people think when you say that, they're just thinking like, whoa, 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 pump the brakes. The man just passed away. You want to just forget him for, you know. So it's, it's a lot of mis, misunderstood uh, of what the message really stand high. It doesn't take anything away from uh, Shiri and, 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 and representing the, the, the wonderful, powerful, beautiful, amazing black women within this world doesn't take anything away from them. What E-Man is pretty much saying, and, and at least how I take what E-Man's message is, and of course you can watch his channel, watch your streams, watch sign a petition, learn up on it. But the way I interpreted it as is T'Challa, man. The character T'Challa is so big in nature and the narrative and the story and, and the message and, and seeing a, a black man in, in, in a position of power that he's in, there are so much there's just so much more in that character that to kill him off which again the whole thing is you know nate moore has come out and this is one of the executive producers one of the head honchos in marvel came out about a year and a half ago interviewed and talked about the process when they got the news that chadwick boseman passed away not months not weeks not years but immediately they had a conversation with with ryan coogler and ryan coogler himself said that we are not recasting t'challa Listen, we have all, or maybe we haven't, but I can just speak for myself. I have dealt with some, some a, a, a really big death in my life. And I know when it comes to decision makings and, and the process of losing someone and just the whole thing around it of just grief, it's, it's a lot's going on in your head, right? For me, and this is no disrespect to Ryan Kluger because I'm going to talk about him here in a second. Um, I don't think that decision should be had on one individual. I know he's the director. He wrote the film. This is a this is a passion project. He brought so much love and so much so much to Black Panther in 2018, and, and and it's a film that I hold near and dear to my heart. As as millions of people around the world, people that look like me, Black, White, Puerto Rican, Asian, men, women, children, everyone around the world, it was it was one of those impactful films 
I know the film for some people is like, oh, Black Panther was a good, you know, teach your own. It, it's it's an excellent film to me. <sighs> that pressure that Nate Moore and Kevin Feige just to put on one person to me is 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 is, is kind of kind of crazy to me if I'm being honest with you all. But either way, they're not recasting T'Challa. That's the so, and I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. That is their decision they're standing on today. This is a business at the end of the day, you know, and this is uh, an understanding that we lost a a, a, a a once in a lifetime type of individual. I've, I've never met Chad with Bozeman, but I'm just referring to just seeing him on social media, the way he he presents himself, the stuff he said, the stuff he's done. Um, he, he, he carries himself with with he's one of those people where you don't even have to meet him to understand the impact that that person has on you, even through a TV screen. Um, he was that type of individual. I understand how the how his role and how his performance was so impactful to the world, and you would think that there's no way that we can replace this man. But then we have to remember, as as harsh as it may sound, it's it's a fictional character um, within a fictional world uh, based upon fictional things, right? It's just so much more to be had with a black man being a ruler of the of Wakanda, uh, the responsibilities because we haven't even seen what a world, what a what a what a a Wakanda ran ruled king T'Challa looks like. We haven't gotten those opportunities. Uh, we haven't seen the toss and turn of fighting alongside with the Avengers while keeping a country at bay with invaders and and all the different stuff there. It's just so much to be had with the character, man. And again, it doesn't take away from Shiri, maybe later down the road, Black Panther 3 taking on the mantle. Uh, it doesn't take anything away from, you know, all the different narratives and storylines that we have within the Black Panther world. Um, it's just so much to be had. And, and just to say no more T'Challa in the MCU is just a mistake, in my opinion, in my personal opinion. So with all that being said, we got the trailer last night. We played it. You know, there's a reaction on the channel for it. I'm not going to lie. It's a good trailer. It looks, I mean, the visuals alone is something that just, that leaves you in awe. Um, I have a couple uh, uh, screenshots here. I don't want to play the trailer again just for, you know, luckily uh, Disney and, and Marvel, they didn't pull the trailer reaction down last night. I don't want to take my chances of playing it again. I mean, we've seen it, you know, a thousand times at this point. Um, but I do have some screenshots again, just to kind of, just to highlight some of the things that just really stood out to me, man. Um, I mean, we talked about Eternals, Coop, if you're still there. Uh, one of the things I love about Eternals, um, and I told you all how much I appreciate good production. This looks like they're on location. Uh, we, we joked around about the visual effects team, about everything in Marvel. So visually effects heavy, everything's on a green screen, everything's on the sound stage, everything's in, in the volume that they're using now and that they're overusing in my opinion. This is clearly someone on an Island <laughs> on a beach with natural lighting. Um, and there's even that shot of Shuri, uh, somewhere that I had here, um, just showcasing again that they're on a location. They built these sets. These are like, I just feel like I'm not an actor, but I just feel like if I was an actor, I would want to touch things, feel things, and be ingrained and be in that world. Uh, and again, that's part of acting is fantasy. Pretend that there's a tree talking to you, right? Pretend there's a raccoon that you're looking at. Pretend you're fighting against Thanos. I get that. That's part of the acting. But I think when you have tangible things to grab on, you can actually give you a, a more nuanced performance. So again, from a production standpoint, it looked gorgeous. There's a moment in the trailer, the great Angela Bassett, the queen of Wakanda. She says a line where she's like talking, and it was kind of cut in between of her talking to what I assume was like the United Nations and then her talking to the, the her in the, in the, in the, in the uh, throne room. When she's like, I've lost my family. You know, I've lost everyone. And you've taken everything from me. I think this is like probably uh, Namor she's talking to. But that quote that she says hit me on a 
this is this is this is acting, right? This is how you act. This is why you hire an Angela Bassett, a Lapita Nyong'o, a Wilson Duke, uh, you know, Forrest Whitaker in the first one, uh, Michael B. Jordan, and obviously the late great Chadwick Boseman. This is why you hire these people to deliver these lines to hit you like a bag of bricks. And she, that line there, gives me chills when I rewatched it. Um, so I mean, there's quotes in there that was great. It looks good. We talked about scores. The Bob Marley intertwined with Kendrick Lamar, which I hope they do bring back Kendrick Lamar to do the soundtrack for the second one because the first soundtrack was fire. Um, the weaving into that again, and I go back. I'm just on on a rant now. I don't. I used to love watching trailers. I used to do a lot of trailer reactions on my channel, and I love trailers because this just goes back to my my days of going to school filming video. I love a good trailer because it not only gives you what you want to see, right? You want to know what the film's about. What's the tone? What's the narrative? What's, what's the characters? What are we looking at? But it's a story within itself. And a good trailer sets the mood, sets the tone, gives you an idea of what you're getting into. And, and as far as, again, taking away my whole recast of Chala for a quick second, as far as just looking at it as a piece of art, it's a fantastic trailer. Um, and then as far as like the story shows, again, this is where... The issue comes about. We see Shiri Morning, and I assume that's maybe Okoye that she's uh, being, a, or maybe maybe not a little darker skin than uh, Angela. I think that's Okoye, uh, or maybe Nakia. Um, obviously, and as you all can see on the screen now, the synopsis is out there. The Queen, Shiri, Umbaku, Okoye, Dormilaje fight to protect their nation in the wake of of King T'Challa's death and forge a new path for the kingdom of the Wakanda. So obviously, they're integrating a real world, obviously sad, tragic thoughts and prayers go out to the family, a real world situation and implement it in a fictional story. I've been around, around the block. You know, I've seen my fair share of films. I love films. I don't know if it's just throwing me off that they're doing this because I can't think and let me know in the chat a movie. And now, of course, we've lost, unfortunately, hundreds, if not thousands of actors uh, due to, you know, normal circumstances, tragedies, murders uh, that, you know, affected projects. Right. And they had to either recast characters or, you know, write them out of the story. I can't think of a show or a movie that I've ever seen in which. Someone so pivotal as a lead actor of a project of this stature, of this magnitude, passes away. And then the creators use that to put it in the story. I, I, I just can't think of anything like that ever. And, and, and it might be out there. You guys can let me know in the chat. And the reason I bring that up, and it's funny. Well, it's not funny, but it's interesting. If you guys saw this little film called Nope. That's in theaters now. Check out my review. And we did a two-hour live discussion, breaking it all down. Um, without giving too much away, because I know a lot of people haven't seen Nope. But there's a there's a there's a, a particular allegory, a theme, a metaphor in regards to people monetizing trauma and exploiting trauma. It's one of many different themes within Nope. Uh, good, good film. Go check it out. And IMAX if you have the opportunity. And I say this to say this. I personally think, and I don't know any of these people, would love to meet them one day. I don't know Ryan Coogler. I don't know Lupita Nyong'o. I don't know Wilson Duke. I don't know Letitia Wright. I don't know Ansel, Angela Bass. I don't know Nate Moore, Kevin Feige. I don't know any of these people making these big decisions. I am a person that likes to look into the good of people, and I don't think Ryan Coogler, and I'll just single it out to him because he was the one that made the decision. I don't think Ryan Coogler would monetize Chadwick Boseman's death. In all my hearts and deep down inside of me, I don't think that he would want to do that. I think that he would be man enough, uh, uh, kind enough, human enough, morally speaking enough, he would not want to be a part of a project that would monetize off of this man's death. And, and, every, and, and it goes for everyone in the entire cast because we can clearly see when they're being interviewed, when they're saying quotes, this process of making this film was probably the most difficult thing they've ever done in their entire careers. Reasonably so, because they lost such an incredible individual from all accounts. 
But then the back of my mind is like, at the end of the day, it is a business ran by the biggest company in the world, which is Disney. No doubt in that. The mouse is, is a mobster. He runs it all. He, you, you give him his, 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 you know, his 5% off top. He's a, he's a mobster, man. Don't, don't let that two ears and smile and, you know, goofy and on them fool you. It's a business. When I see the trailer and I see moments in the trailer, such as obviously, you know, Shiri mourning her brother. Um, and there's a particular shot that I think shook us all, that affected us all, that put us back <clears throat> in that mindset of when we got the news August of 2020 that the great Chadwick Boseman passed away. Um, and I'm trying to find the pictures to mural. It's, uh, it was a moment that really affected me because, again, we've lost Chadwick Boseman. We're, 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 I'm still affected by that. I, I, I can't even. I haven't even watched Black Panther since I, I since he passed away. I, I, it's just hard for me to watch it. Um, and when you see the mural, again, put it in the real world life circumstances, and put it in the movie. It just, it just. Mm -hmm. It don't sit well with me, man. And again, decisions can be changed. We've seen crazier business decisions change on a dime um, on a much lesser scale because there's no one passing away involved. But I think of Sony Pictures and Marvel Studios. When Spider-Man's contract was up, Sony was on their soapbox. We are not going to re-up our deal. Marvel's like, good, F forget you. We, got, we, we do our own thing. But what happened? Tom Holland came crying to Bob Iger. Please, Bob, don't let this happen. I want to make more movies with y'all. The fans, the outcry. Don't do this, Sony. Don't do this. Please. We all remember The Amazing Spider-Man 2. And a decision that was made was ultimately undone. And we have Spider-Man 3 and maybe on and on. Again, I think of, an, again, much lesser circumstance. I'm just thinking of, of, of a business decision that was made. Business decision-wise... There was a time and point in the comic book world where we never in a million years thought that we would see X-Men, Avengers, Fantastic Four under one umbrella because Fox was doing their thing and it never was going to happen. And Fox is, will never sell the rights to Disney to have those characters done. Now, obviously, Fox bankrupt, money got involved, and lo and behold, Fantastic Four and eventually X-Men. So I'm, what I'm getting at is business decisions such as emotional decisions getting involved in business decisions, a la Ryan Coogler saying immediately, we're not going to recast T'Challa. I think that decision could potentially change, and I hope it changes, because again, doesn't take anything away from Shiri, but it's just so much more to be had to see T'Challa, a black man in that position of a Black Panther, a king, uh, and, and all the stories that he has within, what, 50, 60 years worth of storytelling to just end that. And again, I know creatively speaking, we can give his story to Shuri, his story to, uh, you know, word out there that it might be a son of T'Challa out there. We can give his story to another character. I don't want that. I don't want that. That would be, again, I know the people out there that don't want it to be recasted. Would you want to see Peter Parker's story be given to uh ned would you want to see you know superman kal -El story be given to uh lois lane uh would you want to see batman's origins go to i don't know batman has some alfred <laughs> i'm just throwing out random names at this point and i'm not saying that shiri and okoye and all them are random characters i'm just saying as far as the story i don't feel like you can just give someone such richness of story to some other character with an mcu just because of a decision that played a big part of that was emotions, right? So again, it is in phase phase four. Again, the trailer looked good. You know, we got the shot of someone in the Black Panther suit. You know, people are speculating that is Michael B. Jordan as Killmonger. I don't think so. It is his suit, you know, replica of his suit. I, I personally think this is my two cents of the matter. I think it's Shuri. Um, 
And we know that there will be a Black Panther by the end of this film. You can't have a film called Black Panther without a Black Panther, right? Just don't make sense. Um, but come two years, three years from now, which we will get a Black Panther 3, I think. And of course, we talked about it earlier. We're going to get a TV series around Wakanda. I think there is still a an opportunity for a decision to be made to uh, to recast a character. Um, and I hope that happens. I really do. I really, really do. Uh, man, November 11th, man, it's going to be a tough day, man. It's going to be a tough day. Uh, it's going to be an exciting day, don't get me wrong, um, because I, I love black excellence, and I love just, again, seeing these amazing, talented individuals. Again, uh, 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 Angela Bassett, uh, 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 Lapita Nwango, uh, Wilson Duke, and, and just that amazing, and, and I don't even bring up Namor. Um, Namor looks pretty cool. I mean, he was doing a lot of, you know, standing and posing. He wasn't really doing any action. But sometimes the, the less, the better. He, he gave me some type of nuance within his eyes, within his subtlety, within the, the shots walking from behind when he was born, when he's a young kid. And, he, and there's like a, I think that's his, 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 his house being burned down from whatever wars he has going on. He has his own story. He has, he's a king, right? He, we're going to see his narrative as a king. We're going to see him leading his people that we don't get the opportunity to see with Black Panther. Um, but Namor looks, he looks great, man. And they're going to really, if we are playing into this narrative that Shiri's going to be the next Black Panther and Shiri versus Namor, if that is the final act, the third act, and not killing him, but maybe, you know, beating him, oh my God, y'all going to have, and this is no disrespect to, to Shiri, but y'all going to really have to sell me in this film that to make me believe that same kid, and I say kid because she was a kid in Black Panther 2018. She was probably like 14, 15 years old. Again, I know the actress isn't a kid. But in that narrative, she's a teenager. She's a kid. She, she showed, she, I mean, she's a kid. You're going to have to sell me on that. Not saying Letitia Wright can't do it, but you're going to have to really sell me on that idea by the end of the film that she can take on Namor. And there's rumors about Michael B. Michael B. Jordan, her training her in the successful plane. You know, we'll see what comes out there. <laughs> there's a theory that Dr. Doom is behind it all. He's the one that's the puppet master that's getting the Namor versus the Wakandans. And there's another rumor out there, or theory, I should say. How So if we're going to play into this narrative, playing, I guess, devil's advocate, if we're going to play in this narrative that we're killing T'Challa, are they going to display that? Which I don't, I don't want to see him die, man. Because again, I'm just thinking of this Marvel cinematically speaking. He's died in his own film. He came back. He died in Infinity War. He came back. He died in, <coughs> excuse me, in a much smaller scale. But he died in, in what if? He, he he died in his his episode. The 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 what if uh what was it? What if Tony Stark met Killmonger or something like that? I don't want to see him die again, man. I, I just really don't. If let me honest with you all. So. What's the, what's the narrative around that? If y'all going to play into the idea that the real life actor died, are you going to say that he died of cancer? Are you going to say that he died in a flood uh, with the child or uh, the war with the, the with, with the Atlanteans? Like it, it, it's uh, it's just so much, man. And again, I look at the best in people, and I think that Ryan Coogler, who hasn't failed in my eyes, he's three for three. He is three for three. The man is that the, that man is on the path of greatness with his uh, his directorial uh, sensibilities and his writing sensibilities. And he he's one of us, man. I mean, you, you see the brother. He's from Oakland. I mean, he could have been from anywhere, but he's from Oakland, man. And he just has the he just when he talks, when he speaks, um, and and I love the story when he was on stage talking about you know he feels uh, Chadwick's hand on his shoulders. Um, I have I have a lot of. I just want to see the good in people, man. I just feel like Ryan Coogler wouldn't do that to 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 a big brother. That's what it seemed like. Their relationship was very brother, relate big brother, little brother, uh, relationship. And I don't think Lapita knew. I, I don't. I don't think these these excellent, like the the epitome of just like great individuals that you admire, that you look up to, that you strive to be one day. I don't think they will put themselves in their positions of of 
playing these actors, directing these films. I don't think they would be a part of it if it comes from a sense of monetization trauma, monetizing trauma, exploiting trauma. I just don't, I just want to see the best in them, man. That's really what I want. <sighs> That's my thoughts on the matter. Let me pivot over to y'all and see what you're thinking, what you're talking about here. Um, let's see where we at. Uh, and again, I appreciate y'all. I'm gonna try to get to every comment because I know there's a lot of thoughts out there about this, and I and I want to read them off. So let me find where the conversation starts. Okay, I think I'm good. Um, okay, I think this is where we started. How long was I talking? <laughs> it was 503, 23 minutes. Jesus. Um, Namor looks awesome. I agree, Justin. Um, Black Panther 2, the character is not tied to the person. Keep in mind, T'Challa didn't die in Endgame. You don't have to kill the character. And, and that's another thing, too. You know, when uh, uh, the queen says, you know, I lost my family, there's speculation and, and people thinking that 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 line is her during Infinity War and Endgame, where she lost, she did lose Shiri. She did lose, obviously, we know she lost her husband, T'Chaka, in Winter, her Civil War, and she lost, you know, during the snap. So I, uh, I'm just, man, and I'm thinking of, of the mural. Is that mural, is that from Wakandans thinking they lost their king? Well, not thinking that he they did lose their king for they did lose their king for five years. Less less narratively speaking, there is a point in time in the MCU in which T'Challa was not the king of Wakanda. He was no longer the Black Panther for five years. So narratively speaking, who was the king? Who was the Black Panther? I'm very intrigued to see that. Like I'm wondering, and again, is the mural addressing that? I do think, and I think I read somewhere that they will open the film with his funeral. Which I mean, if you open a film, I, I'm, I don't even know if I can watch the rest of the movie at that point, uh, just from an emotional level. But I'm just narratively speaking, how what's the answer narratively to that point of time that he was gone for five years, and what was the what was the nation like? Was there were they being attacked consistently? Was there is this where Doom is like, wait, 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 hold, hold up, put my project, put put that aside. Wakanda's not under protection. Vibranium's up for grabs. Um, so I'm very intrigued to see that narrative. Um, so I'm hoping again that that, that, that mural, um, the shots of, you know, the queen saying that I lost everything, that is her addressing the five-year gap uh, that T'Challa was gone. Um, so yeah. I don't think folks really felt the gravity of T'Challa because of how he was written in Black Panther 1. One of my favorite Marvel films, but quite anti-T'Challa and how it was written. You know, and again, I haven't seen the film in, in a minute, but I, it's something you'd never forget, right? But narratively speaking, and I don't mean to say this in any negative light. Because again, Chadwick Boseman is a once in a lifetime generational individual. Uh, 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 from all accounts, from what I read, from what I've seen, a great human being, more importantly. When I walked out of Black Panther, a lot of the buzz or the, 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 the word of mouth was um, Killmonger, right? Uh, and it doesn't take anything away from the incredible performance from Chadwick Boseman, but. And again, everyone has their different opinion, but I'm just saying from my experience, just from my life experience, from my time of 2018, walking around the theater, talking to my friends and family, a lot of people, Michael B. Jordan, Michael B. Jordan. So, and I say all that to say this, it was an interesting narrative that they woven into the story as far as him dying in his own film, you know, him losing to Michael B. Jordan, um, you know, and, and all that stuff. And there's literally, going back into Black Panther 1, there's like a 20 minute span in which the character is not on screen. Well, not 20 minutes. I'm exaggerating. But, you know, obviously from when he when he died, when he fell off, fell off the, the cliff in the whole uh, ritual, um, he was in a sexual plane talking to T'Chaka and all that stuff. But there is a, a good amount of the film that he's not in it, and he's the lead of the film. So uh, there is something to be said about the narrative that was written to the film. I agree with you there. 
I watched the trailer twice. I cried twice, but not because it was low, just because I was depressed and just yeah, Rebecca. It's um I'm telling y'all right now, man. Going into that theater on November, and and you know, by all accounts, hopefully, you know, I can see it um maybe a little bit early with press access or whatnot, but neither nor there. It's gonna be a it's 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 gonna be tough, man, watching that movie. I don't think there's any movie, any show, any movie that I've ever seen in which I, that's going to be on my heart. It's going to be on my mind while watching it. I think the closest thing I could think of was probably um, um, Carrie Fisher because I'm a big Star Wars fan. And, and obviously growing up, uh, seeing her as Princess Leia and then obviously going into uh, uh, Rise of Skywalker. No, no, no. Going into Last Jedi. And knowing that she wasn't going to be around or whatever, but yeah, that 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 was you know it was hard. But this is on a you know this is on another level because um, Chad was. There's only been three times in my life, a little personal story. I mean, there's only been three times in my life that I like cried for someone I've never met, uh, in in a sense of like a, a celebrity or whatnot. Aaliyah, Chadwick Boseman, and Kobe Bryant. Those are the only three people, and, and not saying that I'm like cold hearted that I don't get emotional or sad when other celebrities or people of influence, uh, and, and and you know, uh, people outside of the entertainment industry. Like I'm not saying I'm not I'm not cold hearted. I'm just saying as far as like celebrities go, those are the only times I like physically cried when they when I heard that they passed away. So it, it, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be rough. <clears throat> I'm gonna be real here. I can handle the losing Chadwick, and I miss the talent, but to lose T'Challa is in Chadwick is a big. It's yeah, it's um. Why are we doing that to the character? Again, I understand how impactful, how how big, how how much of an imprint he left on that role. And again, I try to look at things in in, in all different accounts and all different angles. I can hear the argument, not saying I agree with the argument, I can hear the argument that the uh, responsibility of a new actor coming in to fill in the shoes would be very difficult for an actor. But the key word is an actor, right? They're, that's, that's, their, that's their nine to five. That's their job. That's how they make a living is to act into roles. Of course, it's going to be hard for, especially it's going to be a black man coming to the role, probably someone that looked up to Chadwick Boseman. I get all that, but it's a fictional character being played by an actor, <clears throat> right? So <clears throat> I'm not saying that people are wrong to think to not recast a child. I'm not saying I'm right to think to, to, to cast Richala. I'm just saying I think that the way that it's being handled could could be different, you know? And I think that some of the creators behind it are having a hard time separating the two because of how close they were to Chadwick and how integral he was to the role. I get it. <clears throat> yeah, it's gonna be crazy. However that, however that ends, right, leading to Phase Seven. That's something too. I've seen that theory out there. I've seen that comment out there. My only, my only, and this is my only pushback with that idea. And I'm again, you know, I support the idea of recast the trailer. Narratively, you have to make it make sense. You can't just pluck a T'Challa out of a multiverse because that T'Challa, he cares about his people just as much as our T'Challa would, right? He would care about his Wakanda, uh, you know, Wakanda as a nation, his family, his, you know, his friends and all that stuff. So he wouldn't, I just wouldn't want to see, oh, he's from another multiverse and he's going to be our T'Challa. I would narratively, which I know they would if they were to do that, narratively it has to make sense. Um, and again, Secret Wars. There's an incursion happening. There's multiverses happening. So maybe his world, if we're playing in that narrative of another T'Challa from another world or another multiverse or another universe, his universe was destroyed and taken down by Kang, giving him even more reasons to find him, right? And to find a new home. And again, there's there's so many. This is, these are, <laughs> I think people forget too. These are comic book characters. These are you can do whatever you want because it's fictional. So yeah, um, what kind of rare trailer? It, 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 like I said, it's a, it's a, it's a great trailer. It's just it's hard to watch the trailer, knowing that they're reliving the death and killing off the character. But the what did they say? Separating the art from the artist conversation. 
separating for separating myself from that. <clears throat> it, it is a good trailer. It's a really well put together trailer, in my opinion. We'll, we'll, one would hope. One would hope. I go back to there are so many stories with T'Challa, and that's one of them. And that would be you talk about black, you know, black excellence, you know, because there are some moments where they are just that's a power couple like no other, but it's also a, a couple that has their ups and downs like any other couple. Um, but that is a that just yeah, it's just, it's just so much to be told with that character. <clears throat> Yeah, we talked about that. And also, too, and, and, and the whole thing about this to, uh, to recast the character is not like to make an immediate stop everything, put them into force the character in there, you know, and all this stuff. It, it's just saying, you know, bring the character back. It could be Black Panther 3. It can be so Secret Wars. Just bring the character back into the narrative where we can get those stories that are very impactful. Um, the film will be amazing. No doubt. One can hope, and I, and I, and again, I go back to this is Ryan Coogler. This is a guy who has made excellent films so far. So I do hope that it's great, and by all accounts, it looks to be the case based on that trailer. But only time will tell. <laughs> yeah, yep, yep. <coughs> uh, yeah, I wish the child story would have been Malaysia before she we won't. Yeah, yeah. I hope so. I really love Angela Bassett. Really, that's what I'm saying, man. And, and like I said, that, that's that, I felt that. <laughs> I felt that, man. She she's she's so great. I've been following her since I was a damn kid. Uh, she's such a great actress, and and is uh, not to get you know sidetracked. She's so beautiful. <laughs> she's she she is so beautiful. <laughs> she's so talented and beautiful all at once, man. It's a just a uh, a, a, a great individual. Yeah, everyone. Yeah, everyone has their thoughts. You know, I, I love T'Challa. I don't think that's what she was saying. I just, that, just saying narratively, it could have been maybe handled a little bit differently. <clears throat> T'Challa's portrayal was amazing, but I can't see anyone. Wait, wait, wait. Chad was portrayal. T'Challa was amazing, and I can't see how anyone can't like him. Yeah, I don't think I don't I don't I've never met anyone. I'm not saying that there's not anyone out there that feels this way, but I don't I've never met anyone that says that oh Chad was performance as Black Panther. I don't know. I, I haven't met that person. I thought the door took Zemo back to the rift. You might be right. No, 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 no. Why would they bring him back? No, they did I might be wrong, bombshell, but why would they bring him to the rift if if they know he was already in the rift and he he was broken out? So I don't I think the child uh, not the child I think the Dorm Lage would want him in their um you know in their captivity for he doesn't escape again. But I could be wrong. But I could be remembering it wrong. But yeah, hey, cut it out, buddy. There's so many great talents out there. I mean, there's a slew of great actors out there. So yeah, there's there's some, some talented individuals that would definitely play the role and do a good job in the role. Yeah, that, he said it. But again, business decisions can be changed. When you're removed from a situation from time and space and there's enough time to think about things, things can be changed. I want to see the film because I want to see firsthand. Yeah, I'm going to bring, yeah. Yeah. Please, please appreciate it. Sorry, um, kind of a fan won't can't separate the child and chat with basically getting their way. It's so wild though because I bet you, and, and, and I would never put it. I would never wish uh, another actor to to have something happen like this in them. But if it, if it was another character that they were a fan of, again, a, a, a Spider Man, a Superman, a Batman, uh, another character that isn't T'Challa that has such an impact like T'Challa. I'm pretty sure they would feel be different. Like if, again, if we came out and said, uh, and not not like death, but if Tom Holland retired from Spider Man ten years from now, and he said, you know what, I don't want, I did this role so good, I put my foot in this role so good, I don't want anyone to be Peter Parker ever again. And Kevin Feige is like, you know, Tom's right, we're never gonna have another Peter Parker. 
take it or leave it, folks. I'm pretty sure people will be pretty upset about that. Um, so, yeah, I think some people do have a hard time. It's like one of those situations where people can't put themselves in people's shoes or think of it in another perspective because it hasn't directly affected them. Uh, but when it does happen, then the narrative changes. So I uh, really hope to see it on Thursday. Hopefully I'll be COVID free, but see what? Oh, nope. Are you talking about nope? Oh, and I didn't know you had COVID. I uh, hope you're doing well. Hope you're feeling better. I know you, you say you were in New York and you're back home now. Well, get better. Get better. Hope you're feeling better. <clears throat> That's what I'm saying, Ryan. Yeah. Um, let's see what Coop talking about. Charlie doesn't exist. To, to Charlie doesn't exist tomorrow. Well, they literally just made him Chadwick instead. I mean, I just think about <clears throat> uh, Robert Downey Jr., especially the path he was on before making his switch and change and doing things for the better and cleaning himself up. If uh, if Iron Man would have went down this path of drugs and alcohol and just couldn't be in the role anymore, you telling me they would have just written out Iron Man, Tony Stark's character, especially how pivotal. And, and that's the thing, too. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it was a point in time in which, trajectory speaking, leadership speaking, T'Challa, and, and this is the big thing with Phase 4, right? The lack of direction, lack of leadership. I think the biggest thing with the lack of Phase 4 is lack of of, uh, of foundational characters like a Captain America, Iron Man, you know, characters like that. <clears throat> that was supposed to be T'Challa. Um, T'Challa was going to be the next leader of the this next phase, right? He was going to be that flagship character moving forward. <clears throat> so I'm very... I'm just so curious to know <coughs> what's I want to be in that room. I want to be in that writing room. I want I just, I just I would love to know these conversations being had. Yeah. Again, I'm 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 hopeful that that mural and 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 some of the crying scenes um is for the loss of T'Challa via the the blip. But when you see Shiri crying, she's obviously been back now. And obviously, I mean, we know that the, the synopsis is out there. They, they, they killed her. They killed them off. So, <sighs> man. All right. And, and I'll, I'll be, I, I want to see, um, and, and by all accounts, a respectful, you know, conversation. But I wonder if there is someone, and, and please, 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 please understand from my perspective, the community's perspective, if you feel differently, I'm not going to jump down your throat and attack you and tell you you're wrong, you're this, you're that, and the third. If you feel the opposite, please share your opinion on that matter. And again, I'm not going to attack you, the, the chat. If, if someone does say something, you know, I'll, you know, time out or whatever it can be. But if you feel differently, please, by all accounts, share your share your opinion on the matter. <clears throat> to be fair, they did make a mural of Iron Man. Yeah, but we, we're talking about, obviously, you know, I, Robert Downey Jr. is still, you know, alive. but I, I know what you're saying, though. <clears throat> and again, I think that, that mural is more for them making that after the blip, right? Thinking that they're never going to see their king again. <clears throat> Random theory. All right. I love theories. <clears throat> There's a chance Okoye became Black Panther before Shuri become the Black Panther. Yeah, because we all know from Endgame, she was working with the Avengers, you know, the whole earth, earthquake uh, comment she made. So, but to be fair, I know, I don't think Okoye, the Dormelage, they, they, they're to the death. Like they have to stick in that role to the death, right? Unless they marry off, uh, which if I'm not mistaken, isn't Queen uh, Ramona, and wasn't she a Dormelage at one point and she married T'Chaka and put that life behind her? I could be wrong, but anyway, um, yeah, as far as Okoye, I don't think she would want the mantle because of how, how like she's about that life with Dorma Laje and she would she wouldn't take on that persona. I don't think so. But again, I'm very curious to know who was that who who did take on that mantle for that five year period. <clears throat> yeah, it's tough. It's tough to to to, to watch the film, and I, like I haven't watched it. Um, it's tough since the multiverse one maybe you can bring yeah we talked about that and i think a lot of people it's sci-fi it's fantasy it's comic book related you can make it happen yep um <clears throat> yeah and and um yeah i totally agree with you 
And yeah, and, and the way they cut trailers too, again, we've seen it, especially with Marvel. They show things in trailers that are different in the context of the film. So again, I'm hoping the mural is just a moment in which, again, he was gone during those five years. But chances of that being true is I thought showing the mural was in bad taste. But like you said, it's business and the level of money you can make when people do anything. Yeah, <clears throat> because, I mean, there are people <clears throat> that probably feel they want a, they. How do I phrase this? There are probably people out there that want to see a funeral for him. And, and they're, again, I'm just, there's people that probably want to see the funeral because they feel like they want to feel that, that, that they want to feel that moment. They want to feel that grief on screen. <clears throat> they want to memorialize him in their, in their ways. And, and that's their way of doing so. Again, and I've seen movies beginning of the movie, end of the movie, in memory of, whoever that was, right? But I can't remember a time ever in which I see a movie or a show that adds in what happened to someone in real life and put it into the story, into the narrative, and it being the main focal point of that story. The main story, as the synopsis read, they're dealing with the ramifications of T'Challa being gone. That is like the, the meat and potatoes of the film, right? And obviously, <clears throat> defending their land versus Namor and, and, and uh, Lanian. So <sighs> there are, like I said, there are people that's like, man, like, um, I wonder how they're like some people, some of the excitement level for the film for people in a, in a way. Uh, and again, I won't say I was gonna say in a weird way, but to each your own, there's some people that want to see this film just for the fact they want to know what they're going to do with T'Challa. They want to know, are they going to kill him? Are they going to be a funeral? Like there are, there's literally interest. There's people that are interested in that plot more than anything else. So it's crazy. It is a business. It is highly weird as they say, uh, I don't know, man. I would love to see that interview or that conversation with Nate Moore uh, and Ryan. I would love to hear that. <clears throat> yeah, it's a trope at this point, Andrew. It's 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 seriously a trope. Could be there is it. I mean, we know there is. I mean, multiverse low key is established that there are other versions of yourself out there in the multiverse. Exactly. This is Marvel we talking about. This is Disney. They can do whatever they want. They can bring them back in and, and all that stuff. Either way, the film would be phenomenal. I really hope so, Light. Uh, I really do. They are monetizing the title Black Panther the marketing. They put big boldness on Wakanda forever, a little black. Uh, uh, then the Black Panther at the end. Yeah. Yeah, man. Possibly, man. And these shows, and and we and what will happen is we see these people's films and TV shows, but maybe not a movie. Man, I mean, we'll see, uh, Drew. We'll see. I uh, appreciate, it, man. I, again, I'm just, you know, there's no paper or notes or uh, 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 you know anything. I'm reading. All, it's just from my heart, man. It's just how I feel about the matter at hand, the situation. So, and, and I appreciate you all in, indulging me in this this conversation. A conversation I think needs to be had, continues to need to be had. Again, shout out to E Man from E Man Movie Reviews with his petition recasting T'Challa, and he's and he much he can he he uh explains it he is more articulate he articulates it much better more eloquently than i ever could so shout out to e-man check him out uh what he has a lot of information on it on on both sides of the matter uh and in particularly on why we should recast the character so shout out to him man shout out to e-man <clears throat> thing on the use uh means to bump up sure fighting we talked. Who did we talk about earlier about bumping Ant Man? Ant Man and and the Shiri are gonna have to definitely get a boost, you know, coming in their future project. Okay, put it out there. Didn't want to validate. Yeah, there's some spoilers out there that I think are going to be true at this point. Yeah, I, there's a lot of rumors out there that I think are true. Yeah, me neither. And like I said, on the side of them implementing that story that he passed away and also killing off a main character in the franchise because of, uh, like I said, real world, real life circumstances. The leak says it's illness. I think I saw, I think E-Man said this and I totally agree with him. 
in a world in which we go to Wakanda, we saw Everest Ross. And again, this is a you know different circumstance, but it just is it my, the point still stands true. My man got shot in the back with a with a with a with a gun, right? Paralyzed, probably never gonna walk again. Went to Wakanda 24 hours later, brand new man. In a world in which Wakandas have the most advanced technology, medicines, this, that, and a third, and they can't heal him, fix him. In a world in which we have wizards, sorcerer supremes, you know, this, that, and the other, that the king of Wakanda passed away due to an illness. Again, separating fantasy from reality, you know, we, we obviously know he fought a, a, a strong battle against cancer, and we know he passed away. But in this world of fantasy with robots and wizards and Thanoses and snaps and rings and hammers and you name it, it's a fantasy world we live in in the MCU. He passes away due to a, an illness. Make it make sense. Make it make sense is all I got to say. <sighs> I appreciate the sentiments regarding some of that. For me, there's too much more to gain from this film and impact and it's, uh, and it's cult and, and, and on its culture then. Well, again, I wanted someone's other subpoena on it and I respect your opinion. There's a, um, there's another side of the coin and I, you know, I respectively disagree. But I respect you putting that out there. I mean, it is a, it is a culture film. It's a big film. It's, it's an impact. Um, but yeah, I, I appreciate your your comments there, man. Uh, uh, and even though they come off nearly speaking, Chala didn't just disappear. It would be illogical when he comes and Half Life stops him. Make that make sense, Coop. When to Chala, when um, Shiri becomes the Black Panther, and again, the leaks that are out there apparently alludes to her going to the central plane looking for T'Challa and she finds Killmonger instead. So yeah, where 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 is T'Challa and and correct me if I'm wrong, but from narratively speaking you're supposed to the, you have that when you become the Black Panther, you see the Black Panther before you, you know, the conversation we saw with T'Chaka and his son, you would think um that the last Black Panther was T'Challa. Well, again, who was again who was the Black Panther in that five year period? Um, like, how do you do you strip away? Like, I'm I'm anyway, but yeah, yeah, I'm very interested to see how they handle that. Yeah. Oh, really? I didn't see that. Uh, Sherry is holding his helmet. Interesting. Do I have that? <clears throat> I had some screenshots of it. Is this the trailer? <laughs> oh, that's that line. Oh, that's that line that she says. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna have to go back and check that out, uh, Coop. I, I didn't. I didn't realize she was holding the uh, the helmet. That's wild, man. Um, and a lot of your yeah, poor taste. Um. Yeah. Aaliyah and MJ. Oh, Mike, MJ. I'm, when I hear MJ, again, just being a sports fan, I think of Michael Jordan. But yeah, Michael Jackson. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, Aaliyah was, woof. Man, I remember I was, I was, I was, uh, I don't remember how old I was. It was in, what was it, 90? No, it was 90. It was like 2001. 2000, 2001. Rock the Boat had came out. Uh, that vampire movie she made had came out. It was like, I swear to you, it was like 11 o'clock at night, and we had a TV in our kitchen. We weren't fancy. I don't know. My grandma just loved TV. She used to cook a lot, and she used to have a TV in the kitchen and all this stuff. But I was going downstairs for a snack, and and I don't know. I think I was making a sandwich, and I turned on MTV, and I heard, and I saw it on MTV when she passed away. And I I literally, I was like, because she she was just, uh, just an incredible artist, uh, incredible individual, such a bright future, such a bright future. But, yeah, I, the Leah got me, man. That was that. Leah, Chadwick Boseman, and, and Kobe were the ones um, that just hit hit me on another level. 
<clears throat> yeah, Kobe, man. Man. I, I remember I was literally in this house where I live now on that couch. I don't want to make this into a sad stream, <laughs> but it's part of life. But yeah, now that was that. that oh, man, that that hit me on a completely another level. <clears throat> but uh, anyway, man, we're going to wrap this thing up here. We're, we're approaching three hours. Ooh, you guys are awesome. <laughs> you guys are awesome, man. We, we've been at like 100 strong for the last hour or so. Um, you guys are dope. Listen, my man, listen, Brandon Avery, my man B. Avery from Just My Opinion Reviews, he will be going live at 6.30 um, talking about this, talking about DC, Marvel, uh, nope. So at six thirty, get ready. Um, he go be going live. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I gotta get something to eat. It's been, too, I didn't expect this to go three hours long, but I should have, I should have expected because you all are so great. You have such great comments, such great ideas, such, such great conversations. Um, but I'm gonna get something to eat here, and I'm hoping to maybe join B a little bit later, uh, because I'm gonna order something. Uh, I gotta go grocery shopping. But um, anyway, I want to pass the baton to B Avery. Head over to his stream coming at 6 30. We're gonna wrap things up here a little bit. I just want to read some more comments, but hope you all are gonna tune in to B. Avery's uh live that he's gonna be hosting at his weekly roundup show, which is great. Uh be coming in in, in about 30 minutes or so. <clears throat> and we're gonna be again, we're gonna have more of these conversations on his channel. So check them out. Ooh, we I don't know about that, but okay. Um I'm just again. I'm just looking over. You guys are saying uh, some good things, some great things. I don't think this cast will film. Uh, that's a good point you make. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's a good point you make. Um. Yeah, he was. He was going to be the leader. Like everyone's wondering who who who's leading the Avengers. What's going on here? Who's the Cap? Who's the, the Iron Man? It was going to be T'Challa, no doubt about it. Um. Yeah, yeah. A lot of you all. Yep. A lot of y'all remember that. That was going to be the case. Interesting. Okay. Real, uh, and again, respect everyone's opinion here. I needed a funeral because <clears throat> I haven't moved on from Chadwick, to be honest. Yo, that's, yo, I, re respect, you know, that's how you feel. You know, I, I feel differently. I, I, I just know I won't be able to control myself probably. I'm going to have a, probably a, a freaking tear fest like no other. There's very few times that I've cried in a the movie theater. Not just because, not not because I care. Like I, I don't. I, I embrace my emotions. You know, I think it's good to have emotions and show your emotions. Um, and a, and a, obviously in a in a in a right manner. You don't want to just be wild out crying all day every day for just the littlest things. But yeah, I, I've <clears throat> cried a few times in the theater, and I noticed that this. I just know when the I damn near cried when we played the trailer last night, man. Just looking at it and coming in, and, and yeah, so it's gonna be tough. But I don't want to see a funeral. But that doesn't mean that I think you're wrong in your statement there. I just I just disagree. I don't I don't need to see it and I don't want to see it, to be honest with you. But um yeah, I respect that. Um what's Dexter saying? I just hope the movie isn't gonna be half more into child and other half being name more stuff. If rumors are to be to be true, Dexter, the first literally the first scene will be his funeral, and the rest of the movie will be them the 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 morning of T'Challa intertwined with the takeover. Like they're at their most vulnerable point. There's no Black Panther. There's no King Namor, who apparently is going to be. Well, I don't want to. The leak may, right now. The leak sounded to be very true. So I don't want to give too much away. Uh, and again, I hope it's not the case. The leaks that I've seen and read out there. But yeah, he killed it, man. I didn't. I, didn't, I wasn't able to watch the whole thing. I'm gonna probably watch the replay throughout the week, but from what I did see, he's that's the man's great, man. He he be coming with the with the <clears throat> he be on his his stuff, man. Shout out to E Man. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I'm halfway going to see Namor. He looks dope. Yeah, uh, I 100 percent agree with you. He looked he looked real 
real good um as far as uh where to find a petition so if you go to um email movie reviews uh matter of fact let me um uh, <sighs> So I have it pulled up here for you, uh, ZK, unique. Share the screen with you here. So if you just type in um, uh, recast T'Challa, it takes you to, as you can see on the screen now, uh, change.org slash P slash Marvel dash recast. I mean, you don't have to type in all that stuff. Just type in change.org um, uh, recast T'Challa. You can fill out the uh, the petition here, and there you see there he is there. E man, he has a whole video about it, all that stuff. Very well said. Um, breaks it down like a math equation. He's doing some 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 great stuff. So definitely check it out there. <clears throat> oh, we got some some bots in the building. Um, all right. Well, again, like I said, I know uh, B's going to have his show ready to go, and I don't want to step on his uh, his stream time and getting everyone prepared. We've been here for three hours, and we're going to probably be here for three hours tonight for his stream, so I don't want y'all guys to be worn out because uh, I want uh, his show to be as great as it always as it always is. So with that being said, yeah, no problem. Thank you for tuning in, by the way. And speaking of thanking, listen... <sighs> For any of you and all of you that tuned in today, it means a lot to me. Um, you can see that I, I love talking Marvel. Uh, we talk DC. We talk Star Wars. We talk big movies, small movies, TV shows, and everything in between. And uh, I love me some Marvel. Very excited. I don't want to end this on a somber note. Very excited for Phase 4 or, or the end of Phase 4, Phase 5, beginning of Phase 6, Kang, the whole Kang gang, all that stuff that we talked about. Uh, and I'm, I'm hopeful that this movie will be good. I'm hopeful that these creators have can make it make sense <laughs> and, and have a good story and make me walk out of the theater differently than what I'm gonna be walking into the theater as far as my, my thoughts on the, on the lack of to, to, uh, uh, recasting the character. I'm hopeful, I am hopeful. One can only be hopeful, right? All right. With that being said, last little comments here. Good vibes. Good job. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Uh, if you need me to mod, yeah, I, I, I need some mods, man. I'm going to definitely look into that uh, for sure. I'm gonna, You're going to be ace one, number one, when that time. I'm going to probably next stream. I'm going to make you a mod because I need those because we don't need those bots in here. Thank you, fans. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited for Kang Kang. Kang Kang Kang. We need to get a shirt with that. Kang Kang Kang. Let's do it. <laughs> Shout out to Coop, man. I know you've been here from the beginning, bro. And a lot of you all have been here from the beginning. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, all y'all are awesome. Kane Dynasty sounds epic. Thumbs up. And I love you uh, for loving the channel and for supporting the channel and for being dope. So thank you all. Again, um, like, share, comment, subscribe, do the whole thing. This week we got uh only murders in the building review uh i'm not okay review um plenty of conversations to be had about this topic and other things that we got from marvel and dc this weekend and so much more this week so keep an eye out for all that content y'all be safe y'all be good team ironheart <laughs> all right guys we'll catch you hopefully i might be on brandon stream a little bit later so you might see me here in a little bit all right everyone deuces <laughs>